on the internet you guys should say things so i can tell if the audio is all messed up new stream who dis <laughs> oh. oh wow Ooh. here we are so fancy. i'm watching <laughs> volume bars and hollering. excellent Ooh. i think that the good people can hear you i'm seeing bars all over the place on this equalizer <laughs> everything's good hot dog welcome back hello thank you for being here hey p is in the oh. chat let's go uh, we're hype, Pia. Bugabear. Bugabear. We bug. love you, Bug. Uh, our favorite. 
I hope everybody's doing good tonight. We're all super excited. I think I could speak for all of us when I yeah. say that. Um, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Well, uh, I would be remiss if not to welcome our friend, Tommy, the great touchdown, Tommy. You have been here on DM Philly before on a, a very emotionally uh, harrowing uh <laughs> Uh, October Eve, Hollow's Eve itself, as we got to like hear the stylings of your incredible work with 3NG Productions, uh, The Journey Home, the second D&D musical out of Post Show Recaps. But welcome, sir, to DM Philly for like an official game that we will play together. Thank you. I'm re- I'm really excited. Hopefully I don't cry on stream mm-hmm. this time. You know, hopefully this doesn't get as emotional as that one. But uh, yeah, I'm excited to uh, to do some world building. Uh, me too. I'm like delighted to have you here, man. Um, we we I'm like very excited about this whole group. I'm very excited about this whole stream. Uh, we we should maybe like set the table, huh? We're gonna play microscope. Mm-hmm. And it's a pretty cool game. We've played it a couple times before. Uh, Grace and I have, at least I should say. Uh, Austin, Tommy, Taylor, we're like just dragging you and throwing you into the deep end of the pool. Um, but microscope. For sure. Aww. It's like, yeah, <laughs> when your friend like has a new game that they're very, yeah. they're like, you have to come play. Yeah. Please come play with us. Please. Yep. <laughs> I have it. I bought it in the box and I need yeah. somebody to play with me. Please. Oh, it's just going to sit there in like a perfect organization. Yeah. <laughs> It's exactly yeah. that for me. The book, let's just say, we play with a lot of like big crazy rules. This is the microscope rule book. It's very small. It's a little teeny book. Um, it's by a guy mm-hmm. named Ben Robbins. He's built a couple of games. I think it won the 2011 tabletop role playing game of the year. But like I've had this for three or four years now. I discovered it watching like some other content creator streamers who like played a session of it. And they talked about it in the context of like um it's a really fun game when you're like a D player or any kind of you know tabletop game masks city of mist uh any of the wheel of time role-playing game you, you don't need it for that one maybe but you can take microscope and you can kind of build out a history a world um a multiverse a kingdom a city kind of as big or as small of a scope as you want to make it and you sit down and kind of collaboratively you build out this sort of non-linear timeline right um and like that's what we're gonna do tonight and we kind of have no clue where we're going very, it's thrilling. very yeah. exciting <laughs> uh They talk about a microscope like you're in the hot seat, like when it's your turn, there's a lens. And we'll talk about the rules in a little bit here. But when it's your turn, you're in the hot seat and you may be like, I got pressure. I don't know what to do. It's very like without a net role playing. Right. We don't know where we're going. There is like scenes that we can role play characters that like we don't even know who those characters are yet, let alone like where they're going to be, what they're going to do. Oh, my gosh. So it's kind of scary. Uh Uh-oh. So I hope, like, anybody hanging out here with us, like, watching, uh, bear with us while we find our footing and try to figure this all out with each other. Because I'm sure it's going to be interesting. Um, Tommy, I've I've said hello to you. I should say hello to everybody. Taylor, how are you doing? Uh, your your hair is extraordinary, much better than good. Uh, as always, glad to have you, Taylor Ball. I will like have her streaming with me on anything I do for as long as she'll put up with me. If that's not evident yet, <laughs> I am along for the whatever ride I can be on. I, awesome. I love it. I'm excited for this. I've never played it. I'm really excited to like test my like decision, independent decision making skills and world building skills. I think it's going to be very Heck fun. Yeah, I'm excited. I think you're primed for this. Austin, we played a session of D&D last night that I started off saying this will not be a 5-hour epic. 5 hours later we finished. We did. <laughs> that was Our not that long ago. Yeah. <laughs> um I'm like psyched to have you back. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Uh, I'm I'm so excited for this game. Like I, my TTRPG experience is pretty much just D and D with like a little bit of sampling of like a couple other things. So this is like wildly different than anything I've done before, and I I cannot wait. <laughs> Awesome. I am uh, like that guy, as you all know, that like we started the D&D community and post show recaps. And like every week I, I got to be like, D&D is good, 
but <laughs> there are all these other games. And so for me, like D and D will always be my first love, like my passion, you know. I love the fantasy landscape. I love everything structurally about D and D. It's like where I come from, you know. But um having like played it for thirty years, I get excited. Like it wasn't that long ago in my life, like five years, that I realized like <gasps> There's a lot of role-playing games out here, like a lot. Um, there's a ton of like indie publishers making really cool stuff, and so I get excited to try them out and like try new games because I think part of like what makes you a better D and D player, a better dungeon master, is trying other stuff and like stretching your muscles and stealing mechanics from games that you love and uh, like getting inspired with new things, right? It's a breath of fresh air. Uh, uh. I have such a random question sure. right now that's like gonna no, derail, derail us like Yeah, this mildly. is what we do, it's DM Philly. Rich, why is your door, like the, the curtain on your door keeps moving? <laughs> yeah, that's the dead ghost and, and who lives <laughs> in the house here with me. Ooh. <laughs> he's moving and he's freaking me out. So, um, I think that uh, I've been, now I'm all, only going to be staring yeah, at it's all I'm looking staring. at. Now. <laughs> it's like it keeps like flowing like randomly. And um, I it's little from... this is a paranormal activity stream. Yeah, Let's go. Exactly. yeah. Listen, <laughs> my house is a little weird. I was going to ask you to house it for me in January too, Taylor, but this might like turn the coin on that. Well, yeah. Well, no, this is oh, no, no. I'm, I'm You're good ready with to ghosts. do some ghost I, like, work in like an old like church building. Like where I'm haunted like every day of my life. It's fine. Hello, I grew up next know. to a graveyard. <laughs> it's like, true. I'm good. Oh, Little did we know, Rich just paid someone to stand back there yeah. and just shake yeah. it. Just shake it. That's my, <laughs> that's <laughs> my uh, special effects team back there, you know. <laughs> um, uh, uh, it's been like crazy. The weather has been crazy here in North America. I know. Like, I just want to send my love out there to like anybody who's been affected by this like tornado. I know it's like a bit of a disaster. It's a yeah. real like nightmare. And so this storm is rolling in and uh, I live in like an old kind of battered cabin. And so I guess that that's the wind that howls through my house all winter. Uh, yep. Okay. It, uh, uh, yeah, oh there my we go. God. Yeah. I better go <laughs> deal with that. This is getting jumpy. I, I definitely thought Rich was going to miss it, right? I definitely thought Rich was yeah, going to turn yeah. <laughs> and look, and we had all seen it, but he hadn't seen it. Taylor is asking the anyway, hard anyway. question, Adam. You're like, so everybody's going to be like staring at this thing. I got to go shut the lights off back there now. I need like a, a standee of Jeff Probst or something to like put in front of it. Like, I don't. Yeah. Uh, Grace, how are you doing? You're like instrumental in this. I'm okay, feel. I'm feeling better. I, yeah, I was not feeling well last night. Had signed up for an 11 p.m. game. I was like, I need to like sleep and take medicine. Yeah. So I'm gonna bow out. It sounds like I missed a good one, uh, but a long one. It was so it was probably good a good idea. idea that I slept instead. Cause now I get to be here and play microscope, which I'm very excited about. I think like all the time, I just like tell. I'm like, I just love war world building. Like all of the the movie covered. Like some of my favorite stuff here is like, yeah. Like there's been so much stuff that's come out recently that has been like scratching that yeah. itch of Dune. We talked a lot about that on our Dune pod, and when you were like, yeah, there's just no AI, and I was like, there is no AI. Like what? That's like you know that's that's where that world is built from, and then Wheel of Time obviously came out, and yeah, I've been obviously playing a ton of D and D over the last little while, but um, I don't know, I'm excited. Dune's a great this. example, right? They name it, they call it out right here in the first pages of the book, where they're like, you want to like build the history of Dune, yeah, they do right? Talk about Dune. Um, because <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. the way that the game works, we'll like get into it in a second here, but like we're basically going to choose like a, a big grand idea, like what's our big idea that we want to start with, right? Um, and like. Like that of Dune is like uh, okay. There's there's like a, a, a space empire uh, upon which one specific drug is instrumental to all the functioning thereof. Right? Um, it's very interesting. So yeah, let me crack this book open. Uh, we've been talking a bit about this to get set up, but now we're here. And it's time to play. Uh, should I read the little like opening entry here for those who may be wandering in? Okay, cool. So Microsoft, yeah. 
works differently than some other role-playing games that you might have played. Let's abandon some preconceptions. You won't have your own character. You won't play the game in chronological order. You may know all about the future, but you will be surprised by the past. We'll build the story from the outside in. We're going to decide the big picture, the grand scheme of the history, and then we're going to burrow down into it and find out what happens along the way, carve out the details. It's called Fractal Gaming. Uh, think big. We have a massive chunk of history to play with. Um, so they give a couple of examples, but they say in Microscope you can build an epic history as you play. Want to play a game that spans the entire Dune series or the Cimmerillion? The rise and fall of Rome in the afternoon? That is Microscope. Uh, we don't play the history from start to finish. Instead, we'll build it from the outside in. We know the big picture and the grand scheme, but we're going to figure out the details as we go. We're free to jump backwards and forwards through time, zooming in to look at whatever we want, defying the limits of time and space. Uh, you have vast creative authority here. There's no dungeon master. I'm not the game master. I'm going to try to steer us through this like learning process, but we all have equal power. Um, you can make whole empires rise and fall at will. Dream up a utopia or destroy one with nuclear fire. You have that power, but remember, you're not alone. Everyone else at the table can do the same thing. Right. We create independently, but not in isolation. Everything we add should build on what the other people have built before us. Right. This is the collaboration. We're going to expand on each other's ideas. History is not going to turn out the way any of us expect. Because there's five brains here going wild. All of us are like crazy dungeon masters, uh, love fiction. Right. Uh, yeah. When we zoom all the way into a particular moment in time, all the players will share the stage and role play together to find out something we want to learn about the history. So, what do you need to play if you want to play at home? You need this book. You can get it on Drive Through RPG, uh, the Microscope Player's Guide. It's very small. It's probably like fifteen bucks or something like that. And a stack of index cards and a couple of friends who uh, you can strong arm into sitting down at the table with you. Right. The rules are really straightforward. It's like a step-by-step -step walkthrough. So, the beginning. The first thing that we have to do, we have to brainstorm a simple overview of the history we want to play in. What's the big picture? Right. So we started talking about this a little bit. We kicked a few ideas around in the Discord. Um, I've been talking a lot. So what do you guys think as far as a big picture? We had a few ideas that they seem to be coalescing around. Thoughts? There's some good ones that got thrown out. Um, I mean, the one that, for me, I loved the most was the discovery of magic leads to the downfall of the human race. Um, I love that. And one thing, I don't know if we'll get need to get into this, or maybe this is like when we, we talk about... Um, what we want in there and what we don't want in there. I was wondering how like fantasy we are going to like, cause there's a couple of ways, like we very much the last time we played, right. We were very like, basically we knew we were mm -hmm. going to play a D and D game. Right. So we were very like, D like we, you know, elves, dwarves, yep. bards, whatever. And I am a little bit interested. I don't know if we should do this now or, or later of like, you know, are we just doing, you know, just the human story. Are we doing? So this know, is I don't interesting. Know. That's just one thing that I've had taken in my it's brain. It's part of the game structurally. What we're going to do here is come up with the big picture together. We're going to decide on this idea we're working with. Then we're going to create bookends. What's the ending period? Again, the whole thing is like we're creating periods. These could be decades, could be centuries, right? So what's the ending period and what's the beginning period? And everything we build from there will happen in between those spaces, right? After we get these periods that we do what's called setting the palette. Um, and this is one of my favorite things to take to any role-playing game you're ever going to play. Where we kind of go around and each of us is allowed to offer up some things of like absolute nose. This, I don't want to deal with this today. I'm not interested in exploring this idea. I don't want it to be part of our game. And yeses, uh, things that we think may not be intuitive to the kind of history that we're creating, but we want to reserve the right to put in along the way. Um, so we'll do that when we get there. Uh, but it's a worthy point. So to the history, that's a great one. I think uh, Tommy might have proposed it. What was it? Magic uh, leads to the downfall 
the, the discovery, discovery of magic, of magic it's actually the very of the human race leads to the downfall of the human race do we want to just call it of a civilization rather than the human race i think that's interesting. yeah i like that gives us some more flexibility to play around with yeah absolutely do you guys dig that is that cool we like this idea it's a big idea yeah i love it um yeah. so they make a point here that um Pick something big. We want a lot of time and space to work with. Don't worry if it seems uninteresting. It's normal right now. Like uh, the digging into it, the fleshing it out is what's going to make it interesting, right? We just want a simple notion. Um, you guys can see the background that I have going on here. This is a cool site. It's called Utgar's Chronicles, and it's literally a site just built to play microscope on. Uh, mad love to DJ LaBelle Klein. Uh for mm. for kicking this to us but so our big picture is pretty straightforward i dig it um i don't even have to add a big picture in here we just know what it is i mean that could be this could be the bookends that could be the first thing is magic is discovered the end is the down like the, that that civilization no longer exists and then we are playing through how all of that happens could be interesting but i also don't want to that might be limiting as well if there's juice to squeeze from the civilization being totally eradicated but i, don't I think know. there's something interesting to be said of at least having a little bit of a run-up to the discovery of magic you know that that pre-magic space like has a lot of like you know what leads up to the discovery or what does the world look like before magic comes in i think that's and it, something we would definitely want to have some room for and how it was discovered i think is kind of fascinating to me so i think a little bit before that could be interesting yeah the book bar the bookends are eras uh, they're right? periods um they're going to be yep periods, periods and right. within a period a period basically is an era of time right a period of time an era of time these things are nested uh, if we were playing with index cards, we would put um, a period horizontal, right? And then an event is like a specific thing that happens within the period. That would be a vertical card underneath the horizontal one. And then there are scenes. If we want to like go into an event and really like see what happens there, we would create a scene and we put a card there again, horizontal, right? So we have kind of like a structure and we'll see the timeline build itself out as we go, right? Um, so just to talk about, yeah, go for it. Just, go right up. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say, because I think, like, if you have that period being, like, the discovery of magic, there is room to play in that. Um, that doesn't mean the very first thing, the very first event that happens in that period, right? It's like, oh, shit, there's magic here, right? There's, like, stuff that can Absolutely. Can that is it. true, right? Um, if point. the first period's there, there could be things in front of it. But But I hear where you're coming from. We maybe want to explore, like, maybe the discovery of magic happens sometime along the way in kind of the middle of our space, right? Um, so, so the notion here, just to talk about it, history is going to be divided into periods. We're going to create bookends. Every time we create a period, we define its tone. Is it light or is it dark? There's no wrong answers, you know? This is kind of for us to determine, for you to determine when you're creating them on your own, for us to determine collectively. So that might, like, help us. Do we imagine that we're starting in, like, a dark period and that the discovery of magic, like, becomes light, but it ends up kind of dark again at the end? Is there a sense of that? Yeah, I'd, I'd say so, at least. Yeah, I like the dark sandwich method, you know? <laughs> dark, light, dark. Pumpernickel, baby. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> love a good pumpernickel. Dark sandwich method. I love it. Um, yeah, okay, cool. Both bookend periods uh, are dark. Uh, so, so I guess the question would be, like, what what's an interesting place to start? Um we, if we want the magic to like be discovered later, do we start in like a period of like ignorance? Like, uh, uh, are we starting at a place where like uh, education and knowledge are like a commodity that is rare and like exclusive? Like, is that the thing? Is it like the collapse of technology or something like that? I don't know. Or is it just the uh, like the development of this civilization? So like we are just sort of tracking because then that gives us room to be like it could be a very forward moving 
place and then eventually they just come upon magic and then that sort of spirals out of control or maybe they are like a struggling you know civilization that is not quite finding things and then they find this like amazing uh possibility but it's this if we're wanting to shade this first period as being dark then it's going to be something of you know, the development of this civilization is still going to be a struggle of some kind um mm -hmm. but could be quite interesting to explore when we start getting down into specific events rather than putting too much definition at this stage um I, maybe yeah could could there be something like um they are this like great the, the civilization like they you know in any other sort if they never discover magic this is the peak of their sort of existence um but they are sort of struggling to maintain that grip that there is something eluding them from you know they've like sort of stretched their self far too thin that is leading somewhere somewhere to be like we got to figure this out you know so they're like uh it's almost like they're like the civilization almost like seems like it's almost on fracture already um as they've like grown um but then as we know there'll be magic that will then lead them to presumably greater heights but it's like great like too much pumpernickel is what we're, <laughs> what we're looking for uh -huh. <laughs> sorry tommy no you're good oh, i'm all for the pumpernickel <laughs> so we, uh we you know i like that it could it be something where it's like yeah like they've went as far as they can go with like the stuff they're using right now but they, they need something else they need to go like almost like a sidestep to it they're this far on this and they need to just sidestep to a whole new like source of of technology almost you know yeah. like a like source really of are, yeah they really are like stretching themselves so thin that they're just like reaching to the far corners of like wherever they can get to to try and find something that's going to keep them going okay um so like what they how they describe it here agree on a short description for each period just a few sentences or a paragraph at most painting a clear picture of what happens is this that um oh, old, you lost muted. that's what happens when i drop books <laughs> the ghost oh. mute Go. They go through. Oh. The yeah, exactly. goes through. <laughs> it's a sandwich ghost. No. Uh, um, no. Um, is it the idea that um, a, a civilization arises and reaches its zenith looking for ways to expand? Is that like the beginning? Is that our beginning period? Is it it can be I feel, light. I feel like it the one piece that I was dark. we're really was, like yeah no but I feel like the piece where we like the the way I think was that like it, it almost like they're on the they're sort of like on the verge of collapse or like on on itself there and so I think if there's a way to sort of add that in mm -hmm. um Zenith seems like things are perfect yeah that's true tutorial. yeah maybe they're they've uh, like just like just starting to like well and it could it could be a civilization off a civilization that failed like like it's like one like one's falling as one's rising kind of thing i don't know that's yeah um so what about something like a rising civilization expands to its limits they find themselves in mm. need of a new advancement of what how do we want to describe that right um i mean i think that's a that's a I don't know if we need to describe more right now. Okay. That's sort of a good... Yeah. It gives us some clarity. Yeah, I might yeah. even leave out the advancement. Like, I don't know if they... Do they know yeah. that? Do they know? Is that... Okay, so let's feel, say they're just like, I feel like in need. I don't know. Yeah. Boom. Done. Yeah. That's a dark yeah. tone, yeah. right? Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The rising plateaus. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, bam. There we go. That's our first period. Uh, now, ending period. Uh, where does this thing, like end off what's like the end cap right hmm. yep there'll be a lot well, of uh, pensive thinking along <laughs> the period. well the the sort of overarching sort of big picture we had was that it's going to ultimately end in the downfall of the civilization so the question is like do we want our timeline to end with the downfall of this civilization or kind of like what we've been talking about with the start do we want space afterwards to look at the world after this civilization has fallen i feel like after think... is like super cool i feel like you know there is the downfall but there's going to be like some people that like make it through that or something that makes it through that, like whatever it is. So to me, I have my like, we're gonna play a game, <laughs> after, like hat yeah. on. And yeah, like, that's where it starts, <laughs> exactly. right? It's like you're, and so I mean, I wonder if like if they were this like one, 
civilization. Right? I mean, a civilization is that like I don't know. It's not like an empire. Right? That's what just like, does what does it mean? I guess I'm like that could be like an like, empire, could be a kingdom. Like we haven't defined our scale yet, right? It could be as big or as small as we want, really. Because like what I'm thinking is that like if that's sort of like I don't know, if we're, like last time we were very much like we don't want big bad bureaucracy but um I, like that was a different that was you know whatever uh the last time we played microscope i wonder if it's like this one thing that was like sort of like trying to expand at the end of this this last era is now everybody's sort of on their uh, it's all these little disparate um things so like universal thing um has broken apart um you know i have lots i'm like now thinking i have tons of ideas about how like magic and like the way this one split yeah. off is because of this magic yeah. that they you know and so i'm thinking like that's the end it's like that one broad civilization thing doesn't exist anymore yeah. everybody is so okay um separate yeah it's yeah. like civilization like fractures I was, yeah yeah like, so is yeah. it something mm-hmm. like um a fragmented people find themselves with uh with no connection to one another, um, I- isolation. Like, I don't know, I'm looking for the words, right? This is part of the exercise is like <laughs> finding the words. How do we want to articulate it, right? A fractured people uh, look back or I-, I don't know. Yeah. No, con- I don't know if I love no connection only because I think that like, I think it's interesting if they were connected in some way for there to be, you know, the connection doesn't need to be, they are united. Mm-hmm. Um is it that like uh, a fractioned people find themselves moving in separate directions? There's something that is both really specific about that, but also has a lot of light and shade of like, what does moving in different directions? Like, is that philosophically? Is that literally? Is that, you know, it kind of gives us a lot to, to play with. Yeah. Um, as we fill out. <laughs> So I like that kind of definition. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I definitely like that we're we're locking in that ultimately whatever happens, we're gonna have survivors. We're going to have an ongoing yeah. world. Yeah. Um yeah. that this magic that is going to destroy a civilization is not totally cataclysmic. Um or at least it might be, but it's not going to wipe out everything. So I, I like that we've got that sort of ultimate goal me too i dig it i love a little bit of like a post-apocalyptic world building that's always fun and not to say that this is an apocalypse right but it's the collapse like we're clearly talking about like the remnants after something great falls um okay cool so we have these two dark bookends we're starting ominous pumper nickel uh cool. <laughs> i don't think that could be a least ominous i know like Right. I know. Yeah. I know. Pumpernickel. Yeah. Pumpernickel. <laughs> I'm gonna make a villain named Pumpernickel in the next too, game. Too many, too many <laughs> yeah, Really. <laughs> it's a really fun word. There's a lot of U's and P's and stuff. Um, now, we take a big step back, and we're gonna create our history's palette. Uh, the palette is a list of things that we agree to reserve the right to include or to outright ban. So here's the thing, you guys. This is not supposed to be a comprehensive list of everything that's going to happen. These are supposed to be like exceptions, kind of. Um, Things that seem obvious you don't need to put here. Um, The way that this kind of works is each one of us will go around in a circle, and each one of us can add something to the yes column or to the no column, right? So we might want to add, like we're talking about the civilization of magic. I might want to be like, yes, robots. I want like automatons, mechanisms. I want like, you know, technology to be part of this magic world you're creating. We're creating, right? And we can talk about it a little bit. If somebody like feels really strongly, you're allowed to be like, meh, this is still where we're like uh, collaborating and looking for some consensus. You do have to exactly. Yeah. You do have to say. You have to, yeah. you have to yeah. exactly like that. Like if you want to object, you have to, like, yeah. you have to be Beaker uh, from the Bubbles. Um, yeah. So. You're uh, the idea then is like each of us just kind of goes around and we add things to the yes or no column until one of us has like we're good. 
And as soon as one of us is like, we're good, then we continue going around to make sure like we finish the circuit. Everybody after them has a chance to add something else. And then we're done. That's it. The palette is defined. Right. Um, so this is an opportunity to like box out things we don't want to deal with. Like when we did this for Dragonfly, we said like no paradoxical time travel, no uh, overarching authority. You know, we didn't want some like great like intergalactic police force, you know, um, I forget what some of our guesses were. Right. But yeah, uh, we wanted we wanted to like be able to use like yes, other D &D right. worlds. We, we said yes to like the idea that we could just go to like Faerun was like on like we wanted that to be on on the table. Um yeah, I don't remember what else we had. I, so the, the deal is, that. you know, feel yeah. free to discuss and negotiate this one. No one should be unhappy about what's added or banned here. Um, if something is in the yes column, it doesn't mean it's automatically there. Until one of us puts it there, it just means it always we reserve the right for it to be part of it. Um, yeah, I don't know. Does somebody want to start here? So let me just read this, I guess. The palette's not an exhaustive list of what will be in the history. It's a list of exceptions. If it fits the setting, like Wizards in a Fantasy World, we don't need it because probably we all expect it, you know? Um, so don't feel like you need to, like, cover everything. Does anybody want to start? I think something that might be important is, like, and maybe this, is, maybe this isn't the right spot, but... Uh, like, do we want to say yes to all forms of magic? Is this, is it one type of magic or is it multiple? Like, is that, is it like, are we cool with like branching off magic? I guess is something that could be interesting. Uh, go for it, Grace. I was going to say to that point, that might be a no for somebody I to be like, no necromancy, yeah. no, uh, healing magic. You know what I mean? We don't need to go down the whole list, but like we can easily kind of box out things that, um, we think we shouldn't, you know, or we could yes, everything. I'm pretty intrigued by different magic because I think like when I think of like the when I think of that end game of like how now there's like a million, you know, not a million, but like, you know, X number of different civilizations, each of them getting to like harness different to me a super inch. I think it's interesting um, if there's some that people for sure like I'm so sick of whatever magic I'm i like, had a notion um, as we know, got started cool, maybe i can be bold right here you ready uh there's no healing magic or resurrection yeah. how about that pretty interesting yeah yeah, okay. yeah. there are no like That's miracles fun. to cure the sick or the dead are you saying you have to you're gonna have like you have to he, like just like actually rest yeah. in a bed for like two weeks <laughs> yeah. if, you're, if well. you're sick or your arm got blasted <laughs> yeah. with fire what? You can't just sleep for eight hours? Oh Warriors going out with cast on that they made. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's fun. Uh, I everybody like, out here like... is going to have fun watching me misspell things brutally. Be kind. Uh, hmm. You know, spell check has ruined me, my friends. Um, that's my turn. Now we go in a circle. Taylor, you're next. Okay, so may maybe this is obvious. Maybe it's not. But uh, I would like for there to, at some point, maybe be a race of, like, tree people. Yes, to tree people. You reserve the right to enter tree people. <laughs> Is that a problem for anyone? <laughs> Nobody could be less shocked about that. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I, I definitely thought nature things would be interesting with this, like nature. So I, I love the Me too. people. Me idea. too. Uh, Austin, you're next. Do you have anything strong? So what I was sort of wondering is, do we want to kind of building on this idea of what the magic looks like, um, establish that we don't want like formalized training of magic to be something that is possible, that it's something that you can't be trained in, you can't learn. Um, doesn't necessarily mean it's innate, but it can't be like locked in in a specific way. Um, there is something, I don't know, unusual or, yeah, I don't know if we want to sort of put that. I'm super if that's to define keen with it. Or, I'm okay with that. Um, yeah, this yeah. is like your moment if you want to put a stamp there. Like, I certainly wouldn't push back against that. Yeah. Let's say let's say no no formalized training of magic. Okay, um, can you guys add your own things? I've invited you here. I think I, I can. Think so. Yeah, I can. Oh, yeah. yeah, great. So yeah. go ahead. If you go down to the palette, you just want to add, and there's a little like click box of yes or no or whatever. Bam. 
No formalized training. Interesting. Interesting indeed. Yeah. Uh, and we're again, this is a time for us to like collaborate. If this is like pushing against anybody's like exciting idea, we can like talk a bit. Um, but Tommy, you would be next. You want to add something? Yeah, I think for me, uh, another magic that I would say a no to is maybe time travel. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, I think no time travel. You know, it's just, it's constant. We're just going, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. Uh, dig it. I'm fine with that. Time travel makes things complicated. Yeah, no. We got into this whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. yeah. <laughs> no paradoxical time travel, because, like, people are, you know, yeah, what if they just go back yeah. and, you know, but, like, I think it's easy to just be like, nope, they don't know how to time travel. No yeah. time travel. Uh, Grace, it's no you. Time travel. Oh, I don't know. This um, is not mandatory. We do not have to add anything, but yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't think I have anything at the moment. Okay. Can I pass for now? I know it's like if we go around and nobody has anything, that's sort of uh, it we means move on. Like, but can I reserve my right to add sure, something? If sure, sure. We can play a little fast and loose with yeah. the rules if we want here. But otherwise, if you don't necessarily want to want to add anything, that will be the end of this turn. Um, so, yeah, I Got guess it. that makes it my turn. As I'm thinking about this, gosh. Uh, okay. So last time we did this, last time I did this, it was for space. It was for an environment of many planets. So um, dare I say, like, no interplanetary travel? Or how about... Uh I actually was. I actually did have that in my head. I, or I was actually going to say that I, I like the idea of this being like yeah. one self-contained. Okay, yeah. so world. actually, yeah. that's what we're going to do. do. Yeah. We're going to uh, say no uh, interplanetary travel. Uh, yep, that's me. Who's next, Taylor? You Gosh. do not have to add anything, right? This is not like a pressure thing. It's just yeah. like a, anything that's like jumping out at you, you know? Yep. Yeah, I don't think I have any, anything okay, at the moment. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah. Austin. I want to add something to yes, but I have no idea right off the top of my head. I'm like, I feel like I'm on the cusp of something, but it's not refined. Um, I want to do something with art oh. um, and sort of introduce yeah. something of like... <laughs> art being significant or important in like a really meaningful way to this world. But I don't know how to like refine that into a specific yes. To be honest, maybe like art is important. <laughs> um, um, uh, can I like throw some ideas out? Is it like, um, yes, go for it. Uh, is it about like art preserves history? Yes. That like, uh, or is it about like um, art leads to discovery? Is there something like tied into the art and the magic? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. See, this I is feel like it's, this is the kind of thing that, like, when it's your turn, we can create, like, an era. You can create, like, scenes and moments where we really dig into this um, and, like, put it in the world, right? Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. I feel like it's not specific enough that that it's something that we want to lock in in, like, the palette because mm -hmm. it's something we can kind of explore as it comes up. Um, and it's not something that we wouldn't necessarily be surprised <laughs> to see that we sort of so, add yes. okay. Here's a weird idea. Go for it. Um, is like painting like or like i don't know is art in general physical art like a form of magic somehow that's that's something that i could certainly be be intrigued by for sure uh so yes to art magic it could be a thing sure yeah yeah i guess we, like you say we're not locking it in nope. in any way it's just it's a possibility we can have yep yeah it's just uh, another Art magic. <laughs> Honestly, uh, the Burning Wheel, a game which Taylor and I desperately want to play one of these days. Um, it's got a whole thing about art magic. It's great. It's very cool stuff. Uh, so I, I'm in that space. I can get there. Um, that would bring us to Tommy. If you got anything else, I, I'm, there's, it, I'm kind of like Austin. There's something that's like percolating up there, but I, I, I don't have it yet, and I, I think it's something that I could probably do in, in okay. the game. And it doesn't need to be on the palette, okay. I think. Uh, Grace, last chance. Yeah, I would say uh, it sort of goes with tree people, but I sort of just, I, I kind of like the idea that we would like, you know, any, um, any, I don't, that's maybe too broad. Um, 
but different race types are yes, you know two the, different this planet species, is not a monolith right? okay yeah yeah um do you want to add it you got it should i sure oh yeah like, yeah i can add it um that's it the palette is set so this is a really great exercise i think in a lot of role-playing games uh when we do these session zeros thing and you build a group and you do your onboarding and the dm kind of pitches like this is what i'm excited about running i think there's such value in just this exercise um like even if you only make it to nose the yeses can be like valuable and useful to keep in mind but like things again like you can't look at it like a comprehensive list. These are the exceptions, the things that might not make sense, right? Like if we were to be like, hey, uh, we want to tell a story about space travel. Uh, to the, the, the like jumping out there one is like, yes to laser swords. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes to space wizards, right? These are the things that end up like making uh, Star Wars stand apart, right? From like other sci-fi or whatever. I know, I know Star Wars is like a fantasy epic. I know, I know, I know. Uh, don't at me with your Star Wars thoughts. Oh, no. <laughs> um, I think there's, like, mods here. Could somebody blow that guy up so I don't have to take a second? Yeah, cool. Thank <laughs> you. I would like to put a no com. I would like to put no yeah. ads yeah. in the chat. Yeah, no, yeah. no yeah. bots in the chat, right? No. No. Um, okay, cool. That, my friends, is us kind of setting up our game. That's it. That's the end of the kind of governing by consensus where we all sit here and sort of like contribute to one idea. Um, from this point now, we're going to start playing. So we have figured out our bookends, right? A rising civilization expands to its limits, finding itself in need. The end, a fractured people find themselves moving in separate directions, Yeses, uh, tree people, art magic, many humanoid species, all might show up. No healing or resurrection, no formal magic training, no Hogwarts here, baby. No time travel, no interplanetary travel. A lot of these things are kind of close. Uh, thank you, Piano Man. You are my buddy. Uh, so, now we actually go to play. So... The idea here is that, like, one of us each turn will be the lens. Uh, the lens is going to choose the focus for a round. This is, like, one kind of grand idea that all of us should be, like, working off as we are coming up with our ideas, our periods and events, right? So, I, uh, Grace, would you like to be the lens or would you like for me to be the lens? You okay. got it. You get to okay. be the lens. So first. I then will have to define a focus for what this turn is going to be. Um, the lens in a given round is the person who like kind of fires things off. We come up with like this idea that we're all going to sort of work around, and a lens gets to drop two things that can be nested in each other, right? Periods, and then events are nested within periods and scenes are nested within events right so i can put uh an event and a scene under one of the periods we've created already or i could create a whole new period with an event in it right so let me think for a second here i think that um the focus of this let's just not overcomplicate it <laughs> i did have an idea i wonder if it'll be it's magic yeah. Let's start <laughs> with the magic, right? Now, yeah. they encourage uh, the focus in the first round to, like, do a good job and set a great example and play a scene right off the bat so everybody realizes this is a thing we can do. I'm going to not do that. I'm going to let us get a round going because yeah. I think once the timeline starts to, like, fill out, it'll really, like, get a little bit exciting and we'll know where we want to go in and have scenes, right? So I'm going to steal the easy, low-hanging fruit that's pretty straightforward here, right? We've picked the focus. Uh, I'll just read this. A focus can be anything, a person, a place, a thing, an institution, a concept, a period that we've already created. Um... The idea is that picking the focus is powerful. It's going to let us set the direction of this round of the game. Don't hesitate to make one up, even if you have no idea why it's interesting. Uh, the rest of us will figure it out as we go. So, 
We've got the focus of magic. I am going to create a very simply a new period. We're going to call it a light period. I think that this is about, I'm going to steal the easy ones, the discovery of <laughs> magic, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, magic is discovered. Okay, I think my, like, uh, point of interest here, as I'm, like, uh, buried in in the world of the Wheel of Time and that magic and all those ideas, I like the notion of some larger-than-life entity, some being, a dragon, we might call them, but we will not because this is our history. But I like the notion that magic is discovered because we know that it's not taught. This is the moment that it's unearthed. I think um, I think a singular individual rises up to create a legend around them. Their acts and their deeds change the face of the world with what they do. They tap into some primordial power, whether it comes from within them or they're drawing it from the very world itself. I'm not sure, but the acts that they do over the course of their life change the face of this world. Physically, metaphysically, socially, right? Um, That's a lot of words that I just said. I'm not writing all that on the card. I'm going to write magic is discovered, an icon of epic legend changes the face of the world. I think that, in fact, it is a light moment for uh, much as we have like our mythology here in the real world. I think we could imagine all kinds of stories where an entity like this would gain uh, followers and prestige, wealth, power, devotion, religion. We haven't talked about religion at all, but that feels like it might be a thing that occurs, right? So I think that this epic figure rises up, changes the face of the world. Uh, Rich, you said changes the face of the world. What is, does the world have? Yes. Does it have a name? The world has a name. The name of the world is, uh, let me just Google, world name generator. World name generator. <laughs> <laughs> this is a thing that I think Rich did a really good job of when we played Microsoft the last time, of, of like on somebody else's turn, like pushing a little, and not like, you know on this one this is like you know we'll get like this is the period so like you know who that person is what like what it, like that those are like events and what it, we can get to that a little bit but like pushing a little bit to be like oh you said that you said this is the world like what's the name of the world like like and, and on your turn it's just your turn you know um this you don't is have to great do it so this is so great like, the thing fun. is now that we're in the like actual heart of the game we uh uh ben says don't play by consensus. Nothing will like ruin your game faster, yeah. right? So ask questions, push on each other. The rules here are simple. We need to not contradict what came before. You can't contradict the things the other people do. You can destroy them and wipe them off the world, but you can't contradict them. Intriguing to right? destroy your magic right? man, I will say. Right? <laughs> so, so you guys are all like empowered to kind of like interrogate me a little bit, like ask questions like that. What's the name of the world? Who is this person? So I don't know. What is the name of the world? I think that uh, the world would be called something to the extent of, uh, oh, it's right there. If you say home world. <laughs> oh. I was going to say Andromeda. <laughs> Oh, yeah. magic yeah. is discovered. An icon of epic legend changes the face of the world. Andromeda, <laughs> right? I was mildly worried you were going to name the world Pumpernickel. Oh, but, uh... <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. That could have been bad. Uh, we're going to move people around. Now, I can create two things. So nested within this period, I'm going to create an event. Uh, I'm going to call my event The Gathering. I'm going to call it The Gathering Hmm. Oh, I know what I want to call it. I think I actually want to call it um, the, the. No, we'll stick with the gathering of the seeds. 
of the future. And I think that what this event is about is that our individual of epic legend and infamy rallies around them the masses, uh, a, a, a civilization, an organization, a structure comes together around them as they begin to kind of grow their power, like gaining this kind of momentum over the years of their life. And as they begin this process of change, which I don't think happens overnight, I think that finally it culminates in like a great moment where they come to like the greatest city of Andromeda, which, uh, I don't know what it's called yet, but I think that in this great city, our icon gives a speech that sways the hearts of people that changes the course of the civilization that begins the gathering of people around them and the city that once was great becomes a uh, um, uh, the true first metropolis of andromeda people mass around it and while there is no formal education of magic they cannot teach this power that they've tapped into to others they can lead and they can inspire right and they can uh, like create that like spark of dream in the back of people's minds that leads them to to chase their own goals and hopes right and so I think that like the gathering of the seeds uh, it's about the seeds that will be sown into the future right of like what comes next I think that they have enough insight to know that their existence is is a momentous thing and that whatever comes after their time will be irrevocably different because they existed simply I don't know if this has to be what their whether this is actually their what they what their name is or, or what they are known as is like this like iconic figure but do you do you know what they like who what is the yeah. name of this person this icon I think we're gonna call him the shepherd uh, I'm sticking with like things I like here, but this notion of like the flock comes to them, the shepherd comes to the great greatest city in the world. Uh, sorry, in Andromeda, a flock comes to see them. Uh, no, wait. To follow them. Seeds of the future are sown. Blam. I think this is a definitively light moment as well. As um, this, this civilization kind of stretched to its capacity uh, finds a rallying point, a moment of inspiration around the shepherd. And uh, so there is hope, right? This is a hopeful time as people come to the city from all corners of this, this world that we have here. Um, okay, so that is me as the lens. We've defined the focus here of this round as magic, right? Is this very definitively, like, when you say magic is discovered, just because in terms of, like, note-keeping a little bit, um, this icon, is this sort of, like, this is the this is the most powerful magic has ever, or this is literally the first person to like figure out how to like turn I think this on is magic the first person to touch them. magic, but this is the thing. You can always, this is the thing about microscope. I've created a period. Yeah. You can always come in before this period, right? And there could have been yeah. others. Now, while I'm saying it's the first, I think that like the, the defining event uh, that I'm placing in this era is the fact that they gather people around them. So maybe they're just the first for anybody else to right. find out about it. Right? Um, right. Got it. So... That right there is the beginning of what I have done. 
Um, I have made a period. I've created an event within it, uh, the gathering of the seeds, this moment where uh, the shepherd comes to the great city and like makes it even greater, summons around them the masses of the people. Uh, that's like a specific moment. If we want to dig into that moment, we can as we go. Ultimately, that's my turn as the lens. So now we would go to the person on the left. You guys tell me what's left and what's right. Do we go up or down? We just go down, I think. So, like, Taylor, Taylor you're you, after yeah? me. So, you now have absolute control and authority. This is really important. You can uh, create or destroy empires with absolute autonomy. You can, like, raise up kingdoms. You can shatter them. We said no interplanetary travel. That doesn't necessarily mean there's not another world affecting this place or other planes or other things. You are not limited, bound, or constrained by anything except for the palette and except that you cannot contradict what we have put on the board already. So you could create a period, a span of time that will fit anywhere in between these three you want. You could create an event that occurs within any of these three periods we have. Or you could say, let's play a scene. Uh, the scene can only happen in the one event that exists right now, right? Mm -hmm. And I'll talk about how we approach scenes uh, when we get there. But So I think I'll do an event underneath your magic is discovered. And I think that this event, when this icon discovers magic, this is what wakes the tree people. Oh, so you if you go down underneath the period of magic is discovered, you could click add event. You were mm -hmm. in charge of your words. And you can put it anywhere you in the could period, put it right? before. Like, when you yeah. put events like periods. You can put it before yeah. my Yeah, event, that's what I'm going to do. Put it before the yeah. gathering. Yeah. Discovery of magic leads to the awakening of... And I'm going to call them the Arvor. Ooh, I love it. Ooh. Arvor, a race of sentient trees... Yeah. Oh, it's not dark. <laughs> <laughs> They're evil trees. They're what a plot twist from Taylor. Plot <laughs> <laughs> <Lights>. twist. <laughs> um, can I ask, like, uh, how? Is it a direct thing? I think that part of the thing that they say here when we're creating a uh, sell your idea, you know, pitch it, like get everybody to be excited about it. Right. Um, and and yeah, like be willing to like uh, uh, take questions and offer questions, but don't give suggestions to each other. Right. That's the thing. So I think that these like the Arvor have been sleeping much like the magic of this world has until it is like touched and they come awake with the magic as does like the magic of the world. So I think that they're like an inherent part of the magic. Um, especially like, you know, in regards to the nature, touching the nature part of it. Nice. So they, in other words, were always there and kind of sleeping and they literally are just woken up. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, it can be just that simple. Yeah, there's your period. Uh, next, Austin. Thoughts? The hot seat. I think I'm going to add another period. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to add a period that follows the discovery of magic by our civilization. And I think another civilization also taps into magic. Uh, perhaps in a different way. Perhaps in the same way, but I think the term they use to describe magic is they call it the pigment. Uh, and so a, a neighboring civilization also discovers magic, calling it the pigment. And that's what I'm going to drop in as our as another period. Is it uh, oh. like what's the relationship? Not necessarily between the kingdoms, but between the magic. 
Is there a chicken egg thing? Are they independent? I think that's an interesting question. I, I like the idea, potentially, of it being a different shade of the same magic, that it's still fundamentally the same thing. It's just being expressed or revered or feared in like a different way than our civilization is. So I think it's the, it's the same root going back to it, but it's being expressed in a different way or conceptualized in a different way. I dig it. Okay, cool. The pigment. Um, and that's how they uh, refer to the magic itself or the act of creating yeah. magic. I think that's what they refer to as the magic themselves. Like as they refer to the magic as the pigment. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I'm going to say discover and embrace magic. Uh, do I want it to be light or dark? That's an interesting question. It's a good question indeed. There's no wrong answers here, you know what yeah. I mean? Um, yeah. I'm intrigued by this period of time of this neighboring civilization, it also being overall a light period. Mm -hmm. uh, so that we're not immediately saying, oh, this is a competitor, this is, a, this is an adversary, at least at this stage. It's just magic's been unlocked by the you know with, with the awakening of the arvor uh the gathering of the seeds and then another civilization is also embracing magic there's this like oh lots of things are happening in a overall sort of this positive sort of space i dig it okay <laughs> cool, cool 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 i dig it heck yeah love it Now I have too many things I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's like too many fun ideas on the board. Like, oh. Already, this is this oh, is why you. I wanted to hold off on the scene. I think like just going through around and kind of getting a feel and starting to flick flesh out. It just gives us a few more options and more stuff to be excited about. To be like, oh, I really want to see what happens here, you know. Um, so yeah, Tommy, what do you think? Yeah, I think. I want to do another period after Austin's of, I think now that we have these like at least two civilizations, I think there's a period of like the, the race of innovation, the race of like, I think they've discovered magic, but now they're discovering the uses of magic. And so I think a period of like discovering that would be interesting. What kind of uses uh, are they discovering? I, you know, and I could say that here, I don't know if we want to do that in the, the mm. events. Um, if like the different events are the various magics that are getting, uh, we can do e either one. Oh, no, whatever you I'm would just like. asking you. It's your thought. Yeah, I'm just curious, oh. right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah. For me, it's it would be. Uh, I think it's just like the, every both these civilizations, maybe more civilizations. You know, if we decide, are are just finding they now see this magic and maybe they saw that it awoken these the Arvar, but they don't really understand completely yet how to channel it into, you know, potentially art magic, potentially other um, types of magic uh, and utilizes for the civilizations. You know, maybe uh, Andromeda has a specific magic that they're known for. Like they're, you know, this is the specific brand of, of channeling this magic. Dope. Nice. Should we, can I clarify something? So we had talked, like when we said like the world Andromeda, um, I think in my head I thought that that was like basically like the majority. But is that are we thinking that's, think that's... the planets? And now we have gotcha. we basically okay. have two civilizations on the board that are yet unnamed. We should name them. Right? Yeah. See? Yes, I agree. Like that's. It's a light period or a dark period, uh, Tommy. Uh, I think it. Hmm. I guess it's yeah. I kind of saw it as like light for now. I think there's going to be a moment where there is obviously going to be some conflict between all these civilizations. But I think at this point, they're all off doing their own things. They're all trying to, you know, I don't even know if they know they're racing at this point. It's kind of my interpretation is like, there's just this excitement around magic. There's an excitement for, for like, you know, I, I kind of see as like in the beginning, the civilization was very like the, the rising civilization became stagnant. And now everyone's just enthralled by this new discovery and it, they don't know where it's going. Yeah. Kind of like us with this story, but we, we are excited. <laughs> I dig it. Okay, cool, cool, cool. 
So by the race of innovation, do you mean like like it's a literal like race to like invent things? Yeah, I kind of like yeah. I think it's like there's an excitement. Maybe there's like I think it's still friendly right now. But there, you know, like any any time, the competition always okay. happens with this yeah. sort of stuff. So I think it is kind of like a, uh, there is a little bit of like, well, I want to be the civilization that that unlocks it, like unlocks mm-hmm. something first. Yeah. Is there like a specific thing that they're trying, like both civilizations or multiple civilizations are trying to accomplish? Kind of like I'm thinking like space race thing, like first yeah. to the moon. Like, is there something specific that they're, they're independently seeking to attain first via all of this innovation? It could be. I mean, the first step could be just to get it to be a power source, right? Maybe they're, they're looking for the to, to channel it into a power source for their civilization. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. I love it. I love that. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Okay, cool, cool, cool. The race for innovation. Looking for a way to make a power source with the magic as we have these, like, competing civilizations kind of rising up. Okay. I dig it. Well... You guys all went really low. Yeah, it's a dark race. <laughs> Add some dark I feel like I want to come in and like dark hit the mass. hammer Heck in here. Yeah. I feel like I want to put this in at the. I, I mean, I can't. I'm just going to put it in the race of innovation um, section. In my head, it's near the end, but people can obviously like add stuff afterwards. But I think what happens is I think the civilization. Let's say the first one, whatever the one is where the shepherd. What should comes we from, name it? So not you, want, you can name one. it if you want. Uh, do you have an idea? Mm-hmm. I don't. Uh, civilization name generator. <laughs> I can't believe they ha- they have one on the on this on my. Of favorite course site they do. The <laughs> we love this site. Um, Absolutely. What do we want to name it? I don't know. Um, I don't know. But wow, these aren't good. Oh, <laughs> that's unfortunate. Um, I don't know. Let me think on it. But I think what this civilization is going to do is basically realizing that they, mm-hmm. so it's an event, um, realizing that they have what's uh, sort of lost their foothold in the race, um, destroys a large number, sorry, Taylor, Ooh. of Arvor. Um <laughs> Because they're like, they are like, uh, there's like a connection there, I think, between like being able to use, like, so there's a connection there. And so, not all of them, they don't, this is not genocide of the Arvor, but like, it's basically, it's basically like sabotage to prevent um, the second civilization from gaining, gaining traction. Um, it's very dark. Yeah. Okay, doke. Uh, I should. We should name it because it's. They will be. This will yep, start to be. Yeah, we're getting there now. Um. Hmm. I have a name for the civilization that uses the pigment. If that sort of helps, sort of push things somewhere. Sure. But it's uh-huh. your. So I don't want to like jump over you. No, do it. Because I was uh, going to ask earlier. Yeah. Uh, I think it's called uh, Xanthophis. Xanthophis. Nice. I'm yeah, just going to edit that right into in. our... Uh, this yeah. is us, like, finding That's our cool. footing, right? Uh, but yeah, I dig. I dig. Cool. Uh, this one here, they like... It's Clean Clean Quan, but I like Cleamand. K-L-E-E-M-A-N-D. I don't know if that... I don't know. The Cleamans... Uh, I dig it. No, the Clemens. Like yeah, it. the Clemens. Uh, we do Clemens. I'm like opening a million name generators right now as I we know, speak. I got like seven or five <laughs> sites over yes. there. I mean, it sometimes can be such a help just to get like a little bit of uh, an inspiration from it. This you know, you see a thing, makes you think of a thing and a different thing and a different thing and like, okay. Uh, yep. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay. So we've got a name for Xanthophis. 
we uh, we're going to define the Clemens. Is that the civilization from the beginning? Should I put their name in there? Mm-hmm. That was what I was thinking. Is that the place where the yeah. shepherd comes okay. from? Okay. Oops. How do I spell it, Grace? K L E M A N S is what I have. Sick. Okay. Um. So, how did how did the tree people die? Um, I think like some large mass, um, like, uh, bio attack. You know. Um. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um. Is it magical? I think it's magical. I think that they harness like this like plant killing magic energy and they send a bunch of people there and are able to just like destroy a bunch like of these like a lot of the these trees. brutal <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> love it i blame the pumpernickel ghost too yeah yeah <laughs> um okay yeah. so does that bring it back around to me then Yes, yeah, so again? the lens, this is the deal. Each turn, one of us will be the lens. I will pass it off when we're done here. The lens at uh, the beginning of the round can lay two nested objects at the end of the round. The lens is the only one who goes again, and uh, they can, again, create two nested objects if they want. So I think that this is what happens. I'm just thinking where I want to go here because you guys have created some very, very, very cool stuff. Okay. I'm going to create another event. It is going to be um, probably dark-ish. But I think as the Arvor awake to find a world where the Clemens have gained this ability, where the shepherd uh, has like risen and walks the world, changing it with every kind of step he takes across it. I don't mean to be gendering them. I like that they're they. Um, I think that... I think that the Arvor have a great conculation. I think that they gather together to assess the course of the world uh, in terms of their expectations now that these other peoples who we have not defined very well uh, what these civilizations are. Are they humans? Are they more than that? Are they less than that? Um, I think that we know that the Arvor is like this kind of unified species who are awakening while these changes kind of wash over the world. They find themselves at like a crossroads in terms of um, how are we as, as as a group, as a collective of individuals who um, ha- are bound together uh, by our fate, by our abilities, by our nature, uh, how do we perceive the Clemens? What do they mean to us? Do we embrace them? Do we stand against them? And so I believe that there's like a great conculation of the Arvor in the vast forest. Uh, called uh, called the Lyris Wood and I think that um, they gather together for like this meeting to determine and discuss how they feel about the Clemens, how they will engage with this new and uh, greater people now that they have magic at their tips. Um, Yeah, I think that that... Oops, that should not have been a period. Sorry. (laughs) Uh Let me do one of these. Right. Okay. Yep. Let me delete that. Delete. Okay, cool. I want to put an event here. Yeah. 
and I want it's definitely I think dark because uh, they're afraid and unsure and so I think that within that event we will play a scene and I think that when we play a scene uh, let me just talk about it for a second we haven't talked about scenes so you have yeah I think you have two I think you have two options okay when we play a scene uh I could choose to do a dictated scene right here where I'm going to tell you who is there, what happens to them, what they decide. The reason to play a scene is to answer a question. There's a question at the heart of it. As soon as we answer that question, we're out of the scene. It's not about like the action, the excitement of it. We can come back and like revisit. But I think that the question is, how do the Arvor feel about magic in the hands of others? In the hands of the Clemens, specifically, let's say, uh, right? So the question is, how do the Arvor feel about magic in the hands of the Clemens? Right. And I think that, um, you know, the scene is happening at the great concolation, right? So here's the thing. Let me talk about scenes for a second. Let me get here. Okay. Uh, each player will control a character in the scene. Uh, we're looking to answer the question. Now, we can't change the future. We know where the future is going, right? Uh, so we can't actually... It's nope. not great for the armor. <laughs> <Nope. some> <laughs> it's not great for them. Uh, scenes are the smallest unit of history. They show us exactly what happens at a specific place in a specific time with a specific people. Scenes are different because instead of creating unilaterally, all of us can join and role play to determine what happens. You give up absolute control, but in return, you get to decide what everybody is going to role play about, turning everyone's attention to a part of the history that interests you. So, to create a scene, you first pose a question. How do the Arvor or feel about magic in the hands of the Clemens. Boom. Uh, the goal of the scene is to answer the question. So that's the question. The stage is the great forest of the Lear, of the Learwood. Okay. Um, choose the characters. So when we choose characters in a scene, we could choose the prominent and important characters. I think that I am going to play uh, Broadbow, who I think is a skeptic. And I think that Broadbow has um, negative feelings about all of this. I'm going to just uh, reveal, as I choose a character, right, I'm going to reveal thoughts about the character to the rest of you to orient, like, what you want to do, how you want to approach this. But I think that Broadbow is a, is a youth. I think that um, I don't know how we measure the age of the Arvor, but I think in the eyes of each other, he's seen as young and a bit of an upstart. And I think his sap runs a little thin and hot. And they're like, all right, man. You need a root for another few centuries and, like, chill. Uh, but he's does not look favorably, I think, upon the Clemens. So, that's the scene. That's one character. You all can choose other prominent characters. I don't know who else is here yet, if any of you have ideas. If you want to play uh, a smaller character, you're allowed to do that. You could play a side character who mostly hangs out in the background, okay? Um, one of us could play time if we felt that were important. We could literally just be the march of time in the scene, driving forward the action, forcing the rest of us role-playing to, like, respond to the passage of time as it occurs, right? Um, we can create and destroy right here in the scene. If I, as Broadbow, say that I look up upon the sky at the twin moons of Andromeda, well, that means that there's two <laughs> moons. I won't say that, but I could. You could create anything. If you say that, like, uh, you know, you're playing, like, Broadleaf, who was once an ancient friend to the dwarves, then that's now the truth, right? So all of us have power here. Uh, do any of you guys have ideas about who you want to play in a scene? Somebody's got to be the supporter, right? That if the magic awake. Uh, what did you I say? What was the name bow. of your character? A young Arvor malcontent. 
Can I uh, throw in? I would like to be one of the Arvor that's like four, certainly for uh, trusting the Clemens and the Shepherd. What's that Arvor's um, name? Breitbark. <laughs> I think. And I think that she's like a little bit more of like an ancient Arvor, um, a little older, a little slower, thinks about things. Um, yeah, and I think that she's like more trusting of the Shepherd specifically and like the Clemens. Anybody else? Yeah, I think in that same aspect, I'm gonna play. Uh... Bitterberry, who's an older, uh, o- older Arvar as well, but all- is a curmudgeon and thinks they should be stay in isolation. Uh, is more on the side of like just because you know these people are here doesn't we should we should hide ourselves away. Grayson Austin thoughts. So I just want to clarify something about this great compilation. Is it just Arvor that are present? I think so, yeah. I think as they awake, um, they gather, you know, and they and they gather okay. together in exclusion. That's not to say that uh, there might not be, like, another there watching, witnessing, perceiving, influencing. Uh, magic has occurred. We don't know what it could do. Can it cloak people's faces, illusions, change their flesh? Can they be trees? I don't know, you know. Um, yeah, but I think the intention of this conclation, as it's called, is that is that the Arvor will treat with one another, you know, and moot. Gotcha. Oh, so then that's I think... interesting. Uh, in the chat here, uh, Fictive Fun is saying, have a Clemens show up or be there would raise the tension. Yeah, I dig it. I was going <sighs> to say, I was going to, I was going to suggest uh, that <laughs> I... I may play uh, uh, a Clemens of some kind who is who is present, maybe not initially uh, mm-hmm. or known to the <laughs> to them, um, but I think they. Yeah. Uh, I think, I think it's tough. This is where we get on the spot with yeah. this game, you guys. This is one of these things where the structure of D&D, as Grace and I will tell you, is great because limiting your options means it makes it easier to make your choices <laughs> when uh, the mm-hmm. like infinite expanse of possibility lays before you. It is easy to like get lost in the like decision making of it all, right? Um, and crystallize it. So, yeah, it's part of the fun of this. If you know you're a Clemens coming, you know, you can see how the combo, you know, and then see yeah, what you might be there. Yeah. I have a suggestion, but I don't want to, I don't want to influence. Well, I think, I think their name is Will Veers. Uh, they, I think are thinking as all of this is happening, that they are focused and are deeply invested in this conversation. Uh, I think they are waiting for the outcome of this conversation. They may not be able to know what is said depending on what language the Arvor speak, but they are waiting. Okay, I dig it. That's a great question. I dig it, I dig it. Uh, Grace? Yeah, yeah. I'll play. Uh, I'll break the Arvors all having B double B names. I'm gonna. I'll be. I'll oh, be. I'll be long. That. Yeah, I'll be uh, long leaf. Yeah, so we'll keep the alliteration. Yes. Uh, Incredible. But is yet undecided. Does not know. Does not know. I think you what just to do. This is an I unusual think you just situation. The most important person in the scene. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
so, as um, yet undecided. I'm like oh, jumping okay. around a little bit, right? Long but way. they say here, like when you create a scene, uh, the player making the scene may specify one or two characters somebody has to play. The player can also name one or two characters that no one is allowed to play. They can be characters we've met already, just descriptions, roles, relationships, the doctor's son, right? Um, you might say, I require the king and a secret heretic and I ban the king's son and anyone from a neighboring kingdom. So when you guys want to set scenes, you can define them with like explicit parameters, right? And you can like put us in the spot where like you tell us all the people in the room and say like these people are really important. Somebody has to take X, Y, and Z, right? Um, again, there is room to dictate a scene. Um, if you want to have absolute control over it, you're still looking to like answer. So as all of us play the scene, the kind of advice that they give you, um, each player states one thing the character is thinking about the upcoming scene. We just did that. So we have a pretty clear idea with each other as players, like what's going on in the heads of uh, all these individuals. Is it light or dark? We'll find out when we're done, I think. Um, playing the scenes. Role play what your character does and thinks. If somebody tries to do something to your character, you decide the outcome. If I decide, uh, you know, I'm I'm going to punch Longleaf in the bark, then uh, Grace gets to tell me, like, what happens there. Um, shape the world by describing what your character perceives and how they react to it, right? Do they look up at the twin moons? Do they celebrate? Are they afraid because there only used to be one? Uh, the things that your character perceives here, like, are just as powerful as anything else we create in the world. Um, each of us, should we decide, can introduce and play secondary characters along the way, right? If you feel the need in the midst of the scene to bring in a smaller, lesser person that has a moment, has a beat, has something, you're totally empowered to do that, right? And so I think that, uh, yeah, we're looking to answer the question, how do the Arvor feel about the rise of magic amongst the Clemens, about magic in the hands of the Clemens? So I suppose I will open the scene as we're in the, the, the Learwood massive kind of towering conifers. And I think that they are planted in such a way that when we look down upon this forest from above, we can in fact see that there is a pattern to them unlike the forests that like the five of us may know from here on earth i think that there is a uniformity amidst the kind of chaos of nature that um we can see structurally kind of concentric rings and these waving curves there is a uh, a method to the madness of where the trees lie in this forest. And as we come down into like the great conchalation, I think Broadbow is, um, he's disgruntled and he like turns looking upon the other Arvor that are gathered in this like great glade, right? Uh, there's, I think like a waterfall probably, right? Mist in the air, this kind of moisture, like clinging dew drops on all the branches and the big broad leaves. And I think uh, broad bow, hasty and thin barked as he is, is just like, um, we cannot trust them they are too fleeting too fast they will burn up like the leaves of last year's fall when the lightning strikes in the dry ground they will burn themselves away will not endure as we have through all of this they cannot be trusted You say too fast, young one, but you're the one being hasty. They awoken us. We could learn so much from them. We have to listen to the wind. Think. Heard naught but wind since we went to sleep. Yeah, you both make good points. Just because they just because they awoken us, doesn't mean we know nothing about them. What will we learn in isolation? Yeah. We will be peaceful. We will. We don't need to learn. We can stay as trees. 
as our bar. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> I think that they are dangerous. I think they know not what they do. They have no schools, no teachings, no lessons. Each wields what they find. Reckless, bold, moral or not. So, so you would leave them to find out this on their own? We could, we could leave them. I would crush them. them. I would raise up every tree in this forest to swallow their stone buildings and drive them back away. Now that is too hasty. Your branches do are I come? Too brittle. Oh, sorry. Do I come to you with stone buildings here in this space? I come to you as I, just one person. Representative of many, yes. But the buildings we carry, the things we create, are not us. This shepherd has called you, and you gather so many in one place. I am afraid of what the future holds. They call you seeds, but long have we planted seeds. And you are different. And look what you have grown. Look what you have grown. This forest, yourselves, while you've been sleeping. Think what we can do. Yeah, yeah it we... makes a good point. I apologize. I. This is your decision to make. I would foster this seed and help it grow healthy and strong and leave it on its own. Sometimes on its own, it can grow more. Sometimes nature has a way of letting them grow without us interfering. That is true. That is true. But one weed can make many weeds and we know not yet what plant these seeds will sprout from their earth in the time that comes. You would have us trust yeah. them, Breitbark? Yes, trust them. Watch them grow. See what does grow. If we stay in isolation, we'll know nothing of this world that we are a part of. Do you not wish to travel to see, young one? Weed the gardens, tend them. I think Broadbell looks to Will the ears. Would you have us in your stone cities then to walk amongst you and see what you plant, what you sow for the future that we must share? Our streets are wide. Our buildings sparse, there is room for all to grow within our cities, within our lands. We can grow together. I think Breitbark's right. I think we're better off seeing what we can do with them than without them. I think Broadbow looks to Bitterberry always looking up to the old curmudgeon. Like, what do yeah. you think? I am afraid. Bitterberry's like shaking his head as, as like earlier at this point. It's like, I, me too, but I stand by my stance. I say we you, Wivers, you you do what you need to do to grow, but you leave us out of it. That's my stance. Let us live in peace on our own. You discover whatever you need to discover. Grow. Just don't come find us. If that is your choice, then the shepherd will respect it. Though, of course... Those that wish, our gates are open, 
Our borders are open to all who wish to grow with us. Well, as for me, old, old Bitterberry, you can stay here and dig your roots in as much as you wish. I will be growing alongside these lemons. You will go with them? With Will Veers? I will go. What of you, Longleaf? Always you have been so wise. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna... <laughs> <laughs> Whimsy! Um, Whimsy. Um, I'm gonna go to... You'll know where to find us. Then I too will go. I will walk with my back to your stone city. I will walk as far as the earth travels until I find the place where the sea meets the sand. And I will plant a new forest. You you all go. I stay and just mark my words. When they take you just like they have everything else and they take and they take you will remember what I said on this day. Did we answer the question? Are they like perfectly divided? Yeah, Is it like a total like divided. schism? Fractured. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so <Yeah. good. laughs> Interesting that one subsect perhaps stayed mm -hmm. behind. Oh mm. my gosh, that's yeah. so good. Wow. Okay. So I think there's a schism then. Okay. Right. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that was so awesome. <laughs> Sorry if I was ruining very the series. No, that was right so now. perfect. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that was a good point. Oh. That was a good point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it makes so much sense for like a tree though. <laughs> like in the yeah. wind. <laughs> whatever they say. Yeah. Love yeah. it. Love it. Yeah. Yeah, long leaves more of a willow tree. Just yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay, so what I have here is um, the answer to the question: is schism splits them in twain. Some go to the shepherd, some stay, and some yet walk far. This is kind of dark. It feels a little dark. It's mm -hmm. a little dark. Yeah. yeah. I mean. Okay. Yeah. It's dark. Hot on the awakening of this species, they're immediately split and divided. Yep. yep. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> That's what happened. Uh, Pia likes it. He said that was amazing. Uh, I didn't either, to be honest with you, Josh, but we have an ideological yeah, schism <laughs> between Council of Magical Trees. That's correct. That's exactly what we got. Oh, that's exactly what I walked in here expecting. I was like, man, we're going to get That's exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> okay. Oh, that, that, my friends, is one round of microscope. We declared the focus. We made history. I, the lens, have finished the focus. So now, after all... Oh, no. I'm lying. You guys all did address the focus. I have closed it. Um, we can examine legacies. If there is something that's, like, coming out of this, the player to the right of the lens, which actually we decided left is down. So to the right of the lens is Grace, who stepped away for a moment. So we'll get her when she comes back. Um, is able to define a legacy. A legacy is essentially... Uh, hmm. So first of all, we can, like, talk about what we like here. Um... But, like, a mm -hmm. legacy is a thing that we're able to kind of, like, carry forward and, like, create more space about. If you want, uh, in between rounds, once the lens has, like, finished around, we can insert new, like, periods or events that are related to our legacy. So, um, Grace. You... Okay, yes, yeah, so you can that. pick a legacy here. If there's, like, anything that you're, like, um, interested in, like, hanging on to in terms of, like, uh, any of the things that happened here, right? Events, people, stuff. And ultimately, the player to the right of the lens can pick something during play from the last focus and make it a legacy. The same player can create an event or a dictated scene related to your legacy right now if you want. We did. did we, do this we last kind time of skipped over it. Yep. Uh, 
What, what does it mean to... So in other words, for you, we would click like add legacy and we would note grace and you could pick if you wanted to um, Longleaf as your legacy and you then could create an event or uh, you could create another scene underneath that that's related to Longleaf. You could go in and like pick any of these things. You might pick the race of innovation as your legacy and that means you could go in and create another event within that race, within the period. Right. Does that make sense? Um, Essentially. Yeah. Legacies are stuff that expand, stretch through yeah. time and influence history. Yep. And it allows you to create independently uh, in this kind of space between turns. Something that happened. Um, hmm. If there's nothing like, you know, leaping out at you, you're certainly uh, not obligated, right? You're cool, but... I mean, the Arbors seem to become pretty... a pretty big piece and connected to the magic in multiple... not just, like, socially, but also we established later in the event that I put down that they... there is a way in which they can be harnessed for... An, or at least, you know, something there. Um... Um, I don't know. It's okay. Don't you don't have to. That's cool. Yeah, the legacy piece. I yep. don't know if I no get sweat. That. The legacy yeah. part is like a little interesting. Really, all it is is an opportunity for somebody to like plug another like period event or scene in here, kind of in between turns. That. Oh, but you're not restricted to the magic focus. Yes. That's the idea. Yes. Yeah, kind of. Yes. The legacy. Um. Yeah, so much of my ideas are about magic because it's yeah, our whole it is. Thing. It's kind of a whole premise. magic. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We went really yeah. easy okay. to start. Uh, with that, Taylor, my friend, into the hot seat. You're going to be the lens for this round. So, what that means is, we're going to define a new focus. You get to go down there, click to find focus, and you get to pick like whatever you want it to be about. A focus could be like big or small. You could make the focus about the people. You could make it about an individual. It could literally just be about like bright bark as the focus, right? And we could still have things that happen like potentially thousands of years later that are because of like this focus that you put there. The focus can be an idea that we haven't talked about yet. Um, but that's going to like be what we're all working off of this round or building towards or within mind, right? Yeah. So I think that the focus is relationships. Oh, nice. That's great. Yeah, that's a great one. Yes. Uh, so we'll change our focus to relationships and you as the lens this round, just like I did, you can create nested things. You could create a period with an event in it. You could create an event with a scene in it. You don't have to. You also could just create one thing and pass it on, right? But it is um, your turn okay. to create. Yes. So it, they have to be like, they're like nested They are all things. nested, right? Events are always within periods. Scenes are always within events. And so whatever two yes. things you create have to be nested, right? We can't, like, create two separate events in different periods or whatever, right? You do get two turns this round, though. Like, you will go now, and you will also close the mm -hmm. round, so you get to create there, too. Or destroy. Yes, so... Hmm. Hey, thank think... you for the anonymous subs. Whoever is out there, anonymous gifter, I deeply, Amazing. deeply, deeply appreciate it. Uh, this is how I pay my bills. I say it all the time, but so, like, uh, yeah, thank you for uh, buying me dinner this, this week. <laughs> I really do appreciate <laughs> it. So, I think I'm going to... goodness it's tough it's really tough uh yeah because be i don't want to like make a new period like directly after hmm. well gosh well you can because well, we can yeah, add more like events <laughs> before the clemens like destroy the arvor or a large number of them 
Because Absolutely. I think that there's a period after this that starts um, with the Arvor, like, abandoning civilization. Oh. The Arvor abandon, abandon civilization. Like, literally, like, whatever they're working on, they, as soon as the news gets them, they drop their tools, they drop whatever they're doing, and they leave. This is an event in the race for innovation? No, I think it's a period of time. Oh, I think, okay. like, it, it starts a period of, like, the, you know, maybe it's called, like, the abandonment or the, or something. Mm-hmm. I can I can I suggest something? I don't I don't want to be like too uh don't. I was thinking a similar thing, Taylor, and the name I was thinking for the time was The Last Autumn. Oh wow, yeah, you're killing it, killing oh. it, killing it. Yes. Amazing. Ooh, my music died. Uh whoops. Yeah, the Arvor abandoned civilization after the fall of many. The last Yeah, that's Amazing. very, very cool. I love that. Obviously, it's a little bit of a dark period. <laughs> <laughs> is it after the? Is it after that happens? After the yeah. Clemens? Yeah, I think that's like what. News dark man. So the remaining ones yeah. are just like bye. Yeah, I think that as soon as like yeah. the news reaches them that this has happened, which might take a little while. Um, um, can I just ask? When yeah. We say the Arbor abandoned civilization. Like we have this schism. We have Arvor yeah. that like went literally. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, to these others, to the Clemens. We yes. have the Arvor that like wandered off in like a broad bow. We have the Arvor that like stayed in the in the Leerwood. So who is it? So I think it's like it's the Arvor that went, and they're like returning back to the ones that stayed, and like going back to the like the Lyris Wood. Oh, they abandoned the civilization of the Clemens. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, they like flee back to like the Lyris Wood. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, is there like a uh, physical like manifestation in the forest because of it? Is there something like seen in the world? Is there some like perceptible change? I think, yeah. I mean, I think that like, you know, the ones that did follow the Clemens like helped them, like whether it was building or like helping them like... Yeah, like, build their cities, like, literally, maybe, like, they're, like, helping, like, the farmers, they're helping grow food. So I think that there is, like, a big thing when they leave. Like, they're, like, some people are, like, ah, we don't know how to do this. And, yeah, I think the forests kind of become, like, think, um, uh, is it the Mirkwood mm-hmm. in Lord of the Rings? Mm-hmm. It's, mm-hmm. like, the forests become kind of ominous, People are afraid of the forests now. Forests the, get they're... wild. Yep. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, cool. Um, I dig it. So you have a period. Is there an event within that? Yeah. The event within that. <sighs> Gosh, all these periods. I think... Interesting. Maybe this is kind of crazy. Yeah, definitely do, do it. Go bold. Swing for the fences. <clears throat> yeah. Crazy. Create, I destroy. Think that, <laughs> I think that the line of the shepherds, the like line that came from the original shepherd, I think that they take, they oh, take yeah. the like, uh, the whatever the child is like or like the person that is like of the blood of the shepherd and they just take them a kidnapping yeah <laughs> yeah really <laughs> um clemens napping the arvor he's clemens napping take the what what is the word i'm thinking of the and, and not air like, the air Ancestor, yeah. Or the like heir, heir. maybe. Um, descendant. Yes, that's descendant. the one. Descendant. Yeah, there <laughs> we the go. The descendant Hive of mind. the shepherd. 
We do love a good kidnapping, especially when it's a tree running off with a human baby. That's very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> um. Brand new. New Taylor. Who dis, Xanatos? <laughs> it's good to see you um. here, dude. Xanatos, great friend of mine uh, for a long time. He's a good dude. Can I ask you a question, Taylor? Which is, I do, I'm, I promise, I'm asking it yeah. so that like we can think oh, of no. not like book, like this could be like many, yeah. many years. Is there a, is there like a reason why there's only one, like one dis, one shepherd descendant? Interesting. It can be just like royalty, right? It can just be, you know, it can just be like that's who the it, that title gets pet. But I'm just wondering. Yeah, maybe. Because I think that maybe the like the role of the shepherd is maybe a thing. Like, yeah, like th they're when they die, yes. they're whoever, whatever kin is yes. now the shepherd. Yeah, cool. Like the pope, but but not yeah. but all blood related. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. What is it? A Game of Thrones? So what is it? What is it's? They're all named the uh, same. The they? maesters. Who are we talking about? I didn't mean to say that. No, the. The guy who is nicknamed the Sparrow. Oh, they all yeah, the good God. The High Sparrow. That freaking... Oh, yeah. my yeah. own to me. And But isn't oh, everyone the High... But yeah, that the isn't title. the next... Like, the next one is yeah. also the High Sparrow? Yeah, the title. Yeah. I, love, I, I love guess that. all right. They take the, like, the current shepherd or something. Maybe, like, yeah. they take the, the reigning... So, Raven so we're establishing shepherd. that this is then like a title that endures. That yes. like the shepherd uh, is an enduring title as the leader of the Clemens. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. And it Im it implies the reigning and defeat. Shepherd. Yeah. <laughs> it implies something really interesting then about why they would take the shepherd. Like, if it is this, like either by blood or by title inherited, like does the shepherd need to pass it on specifically to another person to maintain the line of shepherd? And so by taking the last sh shepherd, they cut cut off something. Or is there... It's an interesting, yeah. it's a, it's a interesting thought-provoking question about magic as yeah. well. We talk about, like, it's not training. Mm -hmm. How are you... Do, yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. It's really cool. So, Lots of options. I love it. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I'm very curious. Um, do they take it? They don't kill it. So, like, they take it. Why is the hope to, like, change what happened? Like, what's their intention? What's the intent? I think the original intention is, like, just to take something that is important uh, from them. It's not even like, necessarily calculated. They're just, like... Yeah. Get In the beginning, at least, like, uh, I think that, yeah, maybe it is... A hasty young uh, Arvor that Kay. takes the shepherd. This is not like and... a great premeditated, like political maneuver to like seize control mm -hmm. of like the air and like govern uh, from a ghost forest throne, Pumpernickel. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I dig it. Uh, this is, this feels pretty clear to me. The Arvor take the reigning shepherd with them. Uh, dare we call it the, the, the kidnapping? Kidnapping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You, that's your, that's your round lens, which yeah. is going to bring us to Austin. Ooh. We've done a lot with the Arvor. Yes. I kind of want to know a little yeah. bit more about some of the relationships outside of what's happening with Me the Arvor. Me too. Yes. Um, and I'm looking at this period of this race for innovation um, that is ultimately a light period. So maybe this doesn't fit very well. Oh, yeah. You can have dark things in... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I put. I immediately like was like Tommy's nice <laughs> erasure <laughs> face was like. Uh, yeah, I think what I'm going to sort of drop in this space in this race for innovation, um, which maybe on the surface is nice and light and progressive, but lots of bad stuffs going on here. Uh, I think the monarch of the Clemens is assassinated. Heck yeah. Uh, I think uh, pri in what, prior... In what era? Sorry? sorry? In what period? In, the, in what period? The race of innovation. 
so yeah. during this time of you know upheaval and development and and seeking this new power, the monarch of of the Clemens is assassinated, and Xanthophis is suspected. I think that's sort of the like Xanthos that Xanthophis is suspected to be the cause of it. Whether that's true or not, we don't know, but or at least not yet. But that is sort of an event that precedes uh, this uh, this dark magic destruction of a bunch of the Arvor. We've spoken very loosely about like the people, but like uh, are the Xanthophis like a, a unified like species, or are they a multi like species culture or something? I like the idea of them. I mean, of ultimately both civilizations being blended okay, cool. not yeah. being typically like a, a singular i do too yeah uh, singular race just add a little bit more specificity to the way i'm writing it up xanthophis is implicated in the assassination not just suspected but implicated again doesn't necessarily mean they did it but there is like something that points very specifically to Xanthophis uh, in this assassination of a monarch. I dig it. Very, very, very cool. Okay. I feel like we had something like this come up before when we played last time. Do we want to know the answer to that or not? Like, we, like mm -hmm. we know what the like public public opinion like pu like everybody is like. Well, it's obviously them. Um, I can't remember. If, I feel like we had a thing like this where we're like, should, do we want, like, us, mm. do we need to know that? Like, even if I'm public opinion curious. is one There's thing. There's a couple of things I'm thinking yeah. about for my turn, and, like, that definitely just became one of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, so yeah. you don't want to know because you I want mean, to be able to sure. build on whether you want to establish whether it yeah, is true I mean, or not I think that, like that's what the scenes are for is to like answer a question right Austin is like posited this yeah. thing that the world believes right um, the truth of the matter okay. is like All it right. lays in a scene that we haven't seen yet you know I use scene in two different okay. ways okay. words yeah 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 <laughs> yeah uh, I dig it Austin okay cool so Tommy you're up yeah, I have two mindsets. It's like one thing I was going in, but then Austin's really uh, he uh, caught your attention, cat. right? <laughs> no, he did. <laughs> it, it, yeah, I think I'm gonna hold off on that one, but it's it's percolating. It's there. I'm gonna like uh, go back to the the race of innovation period. Add an event. I think it's gonna be after the monarch is assassinated, or maybe before. I, I want to like. There's this event that's really uh, interesting to me of uh, that the Arvar were helping. Uh, the other, you know, they're with the Clemens, but then they were helping the the Zan. Uh, well, awesome. What's the saying of it? Uh, the pronunciation. The Xanthopis. And so, I wonder if I would like to create an event um, where there's a disagreement between the the, the reigning shepherd and and you know potentially uh, Breitbark or who you know Breitbark's descendants or whatever. How long it's been of uh the use of dark magic and so potentially the arvars are are now sending some help to the other side it is now giving some of the 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 research that they've been working on with the clemens to the, um, office. To the other wow yes. okay i dig it so you're looking for an event within uh that other period uh where the xanth office discovers and embraces magic or is it in the race for innovation Poten I saw it as almost like a potential to like the monarch gets assassinated. So now because the, the Clemens becomes like they go down this dark path from that. And so they start pursuing the dark magic in that. Protect ourselves. I dig it. At all costs. Yeah, I mentality. dig it. Um, so you can Good. put it in if you want, Tommy. Um, yep. Yeah, let me write it up. The, yeah, that's like I'm super thinking. cool. In other words, like the Arvor, because of like these like experiments with the dark magic, like look to the Xanthophis, who like appear to be artists of some sort as they like work with the pigment. Uh, yeah, okay. Okay. Do, do, do. That coffee delivery was very You good. what? <laughs> it's so hot. It's. <laughs> It's tea, Matt made me tea. Oh, you like got the coffee delivery? I just saw the so delivery. Nice. Like, 
And I was like, I don't think that's your no. front door. And then it was like a literally a cup of like a cup of tea. Yeah, that was great. Yep. All right, this is what I wrote up. So yeah, the Clemens pursue dark magic after the assassination, causing Arvor to start sending research to the other side. Cool. I dig it. Good man there. Good man. What a guy you got there, Taylor. Um, <laughs> I dig it. Okay, cool. Grace, yeah. what do you want to do? Okay, I'm going to... I'm going to go to the first period. Mm -hmm. We haven't, we don't have anything there. And I'm going to have, um, the Clemens finally, um, sort of take over or make an agreement with this very, this Island that is like very well, just the way it's like the geography of it. It's very hard to sort of be able to take, but they finally do break through. Um, and take it over which is sort of in my head it's sort of like it's this far off island that's sort of seen as like it's geography it's like very hard to get so it's like sort of seen as like wow that was really hard to do but we were able to do it um and on the same day that that agreement is finalized um the shepherd is oh dope. we don't know on that day that they are the shepherd we don't know that but they that the shepherd is born um i i had a name i was calling it the Falk Swift Ooh. Island. That's what I was calling it. Um, so the Clemens are finally able to take over the Falk Swift Isle. I don't know how trackable our cards are for all you guys. I'm trying to like keep it so we're actually like where the stuff is happening, you know? Um, and when we're done and, like, I throw the VOD up, I'll certainly, like, put a link to the actual, like, image here. Is this light or dark? It is a birth and it's also a, like, <laughs> civilization and empirical colonization. <laughs> like, <laughs> the same day. It feel I, I don't know. I guess I'll put dark. Okay. I guess. Uh, I, guess I guess actually I'm going to make it light because I well, think the idea is, like... From much of the civilization viewpoint, it's like we did it. We like got that. We were like able to like extend. And it like in my head, it certainly like extends them. Like there are like you know, it's a very. It's not easy to do mm -hmm. this. It's like cost money, whatever. Um, I yeah. think that. Um, yeah, I think I I I track it being light because ostensibly our timeline is ultimately about the Clemens about like the rise and fall of the Clemens, like these other civilizations all at play with them. Right. But the Clemens have kind of stepped in as our like magic, uh, breaks them. Uh, and so this is an optimistic moment, right? That like, they have this great, like kind of success. They take this remote land and then also this like child is born that will like herald in a new age for them. Uh, yeah, I dig it. And arguably, without being able to do that, there is no, mm -hmm. there is no shepherd, right? Like yep. Without doing that thing, that the shepherd is, just lives on the fox with file, you know. Yep. Okay, so this brings yeah. us to me, huh? So mm. relationships, relationships. Gosh, I want to go all over the place here, you guys. But where I really want to go is to the Xanth office. I think we're, we're going to place an event here in the Xanth office. And I think that we're going to call it um, the Tide of Fire. As I think that um, while the Xanth office discover and embrace magic which they're referring to as a pigment over this period of time uh there's like a critical event in the midst of this time where in uh a sort of like unknown culture i think that we're going to um call them <laughs> I think that we're going to call them um, the Order of Ignis. Uh, and I think that the Order of Ignis um, were a sub 
subterranean people whom have uh, lived in the caves and the bowels of the earth and uh, their entire kind of civilization, their, their cities, their towns, their peoples are like intrinsically tied to like these kind of deep lava flows uh, beneath a volcanic like mountain range, right? Um, I don't think that they're like a widespread people. I think the order of Ignis is held... Um, to the lake of liquid stone right this is their like last remaining kind of city but i think that in fact they make contact with the xanthophis and um in the midst of like their kind of interaction here they offer to the xanthophis um mm -hmm. resources long unknown and as as the Xanthophis are kind of like discovering and embracing this magic, which they're referring to as the pigment, I think that the Order of Ignis begins to like bring to them things like ore uh, of like incredible rarity and precious stones, gemstones from the bowels of the earth. And I think that um, they exact a, a meaningful cost. Exact is the wrong word. They demand a meaningful cost for trade of rare and magical ingredients from beneath the earth. Um, yeah, and I, I don't know that I need to define them per se, but I'm like envisioning them as like, you know, a dwarf-like peoples, right? Um, these kind of like subterranean crafts people who are much more concerned with like a practical nature of things than the Xanthophis, especially in this like advent of like art and kind of magic and this whole thing that's happening with them. But I think that fundamentally like uh, the Order of Ignis have what they need and and they're providing them with some of the things they need to like continue advancing in in this like time of revelation i think fundamentally it's a it's a light moment uh it's a light event right because i think that while they uh demand like a meaningful cost that xanthophis is able and willing to pay as they are in this age of discovery within themselves um yeah Is that cool? cool? Okay. Um, it's quarter after eight. We got together a couple hours ago. We talked about going about four hours. You guys want to take a break for a couple of minutes? Should we take a break here? Sure. Yeah, like this is an appropriate time. I could use the bathroom. My friends, we will be right back. Uh, we're probably going to be like uh, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 yeah. minutes. Perfect. E R B. Um, okay, hold on. Let me do one of these and then one of these. Okay, we'll be right back.
like that. We are back on the internet live. Taylor, you are still the focus. <clears throat> We're closing up kind of past two here. Yeah. Um, we have created a whole bunch of things. <laughs> I just created the event, the Tide of Fire, as the Order of Ignis uh, kind of contacts Anthophis from beneath the earth and begins a kind of trade relationship with them, giving them these rare ingredients. What would you like to do, focus? Uh, also, you're a little tiny. Did you see that? <gasps> Yeah, you're tiny. Tiny Ridge. It's me, Tiny Ridge. Tiny Ridge. Hey. Let hey. me out. Let me out. This is not what? a dance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's me, Tiny Ridge. Yeah, we do need your mic audio. Your, min your mini mouse audio. <laughs> it's me. Huzzah. <laughs> 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 That's about right. Okay, cool. I cast reduce. Um, yep. So, okay. So I can add kind of whatever. Do they have to be nested still? Yes. When you're going to create two okay. things, they have to be nested. Yep. Gotcha. Hmm. Because we want to answer a question. We don't just kind of want to go into something. Yeah, if you're going to make a scene, we want to answer a question, right? Uh, that's like yeah. the whole like focus of the scene. And you could just dictate it. Uh, you can, like again, define the characters that need to be played in it. You can create a period with an event in it. You don't have to make two things. It's your option, yeah. you know? I can just make one thing. Yep, you sure can. can. just make one thing. Yep. You have the power. Gosh, well, maybe, like, we'll see what you guys think of this. Because I'm just thinking, I want to sort of give definition to the pigment. Oh. Um, I've been, like, thinking about this ever since oh, you said it, Austin. <laughs> the pigment. Um, Sanderson so vibes. So I think, uh, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, so... So I'm thinking that the pigment, I'm thinking that it's the discovery of a pool of seemingly endless, like, pigment. Like, it's, it's like this, maybe it's just, like, white, and, like, they mix things to create different magical effects. Um, but I think that there is this, like... You know, they discover it, and then there is a sort of gathering of researchers to figure out how to use it. or nice. And who gets to use it. Okay. Uh -huh. So, and I think they're going to call it the Inkwell. Hey, we love the Inkwell and Glarendar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think this, like, pool is the inkwell. There's, like, this gathering. I dig it. Um, where is it? Is it far from them? Is it near them? I think I think that, like, the Xanthophis, like, they discover this pool. Maybe it's even, like, gosh... Like, it's an, yeah, I mean, it's another civilization that is, like, born. So maybe they, like, are born, like, around this pool. Like, maybe it's, like, in an underground. Like, they're searching. They're searching for things. It's, like, maybe it's, like, a remnant of, like, the start uh, or the, when the Clemens, like, expand to their limits. And it's, like, an offshoot that discovers this pool and create their own civilization separate from whatever the shepherd is doing mm -hmm. and the the clemens i love it so xanthophis is like the first of the fragmenting of the clemens oh very cool Ooh. yeah okay I, I said a lot there all right mm -hmm. 
Um, um. <laughs> that's cool. The idea is like to talk a lot about it and like really paint the picture for us and then like condense it down, right? You only put so many words on the card, yeah. but like the things we're saying are the juice. And what's cool is like we're going to have this VOD recorded, you know? Uh, so. Yeah. so, yeah, the pigment is held in the inkwell, a pool, a seemingly. It's like a literal font of magic. Well, yes. And it's like adding the ingredients of these different colors to it enact the different magics. Yes. Which I think is why they would be very interested in what the... Um, the Order of Ignis is offering. Like, yeah. Uh, yes, because uh, what can be created by mixing things with rare things like that. Um, yeah, the pigment is held in gloves and the pull. There's gathering of researchers to try and define properties and and uses I think yeah can I ask a question so uh, you said like th they basically like take this stuff and then like uh, Xanthopus is basically like divvying up who gets it. Is that I think that like is this it? is like the event is like they're like figuring out like is this something that they tell their entire like group of people? Is it something that is only like for these like you know like elite who have like found mm -hmm. it or like the researchers? Um, so I don't think it's necessarily like divvying it out, but it's like who gets access to this pool defining the like limits the restrictions uh yep yep it's it's <laughs> the stratifying of like a society is really like kind of what we're talking about here yeah and okay you switched them cool this happens yep. before the tide of fire even connects they find the pool okay i dig it yeah so i guess i don't know because we could answer the qu that those questions. We could, I guess. Yeah, you want a scene there? I don't know if I do. I don't know. Big decisions. Big decisions. Uh, yep. Yeah. I'm, I'll say I'm the most interested in it because like I think like the, in some ways the, there being like a pool of magic to me um, it's not I don't think it is um, like when we look at the palette and there being no formalized training I don't think it like I don't think that is different I sort of in my head had this idea that magic is innate and happens in people and then people can do it this is different than that and so I'm now super interested in legitimately how magic like happens or how like this like you know they have this stuff what do you then do with it that is like that is magic mm -hmm. in this world is sort of what i'm the most whereas like the shepherd we actually have never had an like we don't actually know that he also didn't find mm -hmm. an inkwell because we don't know like right we don't know that mm -hmm. we don't know how the shepherd yeah uh sort of discovered announced prophesized they're out, yeah, magic. So, yeah, like the inkwell could just be like a like a focal point that for those that have that innate magic or are able to tap into something that is like oh, ephemeral. Oh, yeah, it's like the it's active kind of like, ingredient. Like, yeah, yeah, the, the focal point that you can then channel in some specific way to create or produce magic. Yeah. Um, but it's not necessarily like inherently magical. It's, yeah, yeah some things are quite. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it's like the comparison between like the science. Oh no, like... my power! Bear with me, okay? It's hanging in there. Oh no! This this might be <laughs> catastrophic, you guys. Oh, <laughs> the ghost of Pumper Nickel. I mean, like, the ghost. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Ooh, mod on. One of my monitors just fried out, and I got like fifty windows on this computer right here. Oh, I'm done. I got dropped. I'm still here. Holy pressure, you guys. 
the storms do not like us delving into this lost magic. Okay, I, I hear. <laughs> Well, they're like, you found yeah. the inkwell? No way. You're supposed to mention the inkwell. They're too close. They're, they're getting too close. Oh, my God. Okay, I don't know how long we will endure. Uh, it sh- should we, like, fry out and vanish, uh, we will return for part two. But, oh, yeah, this is intense. Wow. Getting yeah, yeah, I know. It's very yeah. unusual. <laughs> it's Jeez. Yeah, it's like not often how I imagine power works. <laughs> like some of your stuff is like, you know, this light should go off, but not nope, this. No, I have one, wild you know? stuff happening, and like I said, I have all, I have like this big monitor up here with like a hundred things on it. Now everything is layered here. I'm looking at seventy-five windows stacked on top of each other, so I'm gonna sort through oh. them a little bit. Uh, yep. Okay. Wow. Uh, yeah, I was just. You know, these two civilizations, it's almost like the scientific, like, you know, researchers and then more of like these like innate kind of spellcasters, maybe. But I don't know. Yeah, I think I'm going to leave it there. I, Yeah, I think I kind of just want to see what happens. Okay. <laughs> Enjoy. My house might, in fact, be a wild magic zone, Josh. It's not yeah, no, that I impossible. Yeah. Uh, apparently, tonight we decided to like create, and there's some real like power rolling through this this place. Um, <laughs> ay, 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 wild. Okay, I'm opening things up. I got this. All right. So, so you're good then, Taylor. Yeah, I think I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh. Rich, that means you can do. We, I didn't do it last time, but you yep. can do a legacy. I think right? I will do a legacy. I think that my legacy is, in fact, yeah. the shepherd. Um, I'm going to add it here. So we put our names. Each of us is essentially allowed to have one legacy at a time. I think mine is this role of the shepherd, not the first individual, but rather the like title that carries across. And I think to that extent, now that the lens is done, I actually want to. Um, yeah, I want to, like, dictate an event right here. Uh, I'm going to create an event, which is after the Arvor abandoned civilization, uh, the fall of many. It's it's at it's during the last autumn, right? It's before the Arvor take the last shepherd, take the descendant of the shepherd. And I think that the event is literally um, the shepherd trying to, like exploit the Arvor in the like great metropolis I think that while they have been like working alongside the Clemens since like the schism of the forest of, of Lyris right uh, those who have like been with the Clemens have like been this benevolent sort of entity uh, not necessarily teaching magic but like helping them cultivate the society to like all the stuff Taylor said the Arvor like were helping them farm and grow and like um, ultimately I think that the the shepherd uh, who's in control not the descendant um, he tries to like exploit them grievously I think he, like, gathers those of them together who have not yet fled. And uh, he he tries to, like, use this dark magic that we've talked about, this fear they've embraced that Tommy noted. And he starts, like, draining uh, the life from them, like, necromantic. There is no, like, magical healing, but there is, like, necromancy. And I think that in the evolution of, like, this magical culture, the inability to raise the dead has probably, like, plagued them. The inability to cure the sick, to heal the wounded. And so they're, like... Like, um, they realize that, like, the old power that lies within these tree people, much like firewood, like, we can cut a tree and burn it to make fire. I think they've recognized that there's, like, an inherent power in the Arvor that they want to, like, exploit. Um, and so the last Arvor amongst the Clemens are gathered. Um and hewn down for the power that lies within them. I think it's very much like dark 
Uh, and I think that in my mind, I don't know, things might happen in between. But this at least like precipitates the Arvor's decision to take the air. When is this happening? Uh during the period where the Arvor abandoned civilization. I think like the stragglers are rounded up. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to save some. Rich is like, I'll finish. <laughs> <laughs> is that uh, viable? Does that all make sense? Sorry. Yeah. I think I'll save. Listen, they should have. Yeah, they really should have. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, they should have. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, that's definitely a dark event. Blam, it happens before the Arvor take the reigning shepherd with them. That's me working the legacy. Uh, Taylor's round as the focus has ended, which will bring us to you, Austin. Uh, You now are the lens. Um, So yeah, as the lens, you're going to redefine the focus, and then you can dive in here and take us where you want to go. Hmm. 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 I'm torn in two directions. I'm trying to decide which one I want to do now. Yep. It's interesting. I think, yeah. I think what I'm, I'm intrigued to kind of dig into more is the fracturing of the Clemens. Yeah. You know, we sort of just started sort of like defining, okay, well, maybe Xanthophis is the first fragment that kind of breaks away. Mm-hmm. But we're ultimately needing to end up at a point where Clemens is not just falls, but it separates, it fractures mm-hmm. and moves in different directions. So I want to kind of like dig into some of the things around, well, what is, what is the fracturing of the Clemens look like uh, throughout, their, throughout their history? Um, nice. I dig that. Cool. The fracturing of the Clemens. I think this is a good point. Uh, this is like the kind of focus of our big picture. So let's get into the nitty gritty of it. Yeah. So for my first, first round, <sighs> two nested event or two nested mm-hmm. things. Um, bop, bop, bop. And you're free to only drop one if you want, right? But the idea is here, yeah. like, as the lens, like, as you're setting the focus, you have real, a little bit more power than the rest of us to, like, um, you know, shift where we're looking. The tone, yeah. Um, I think what I might do... is... I'm going to add, I don't want to do this. Add an event okay. in the last period here, the fractured people moving in different directions. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to add an event that is, uh, I wanted to find this. I like the idea of a culture that has developed from sort of the Clemens around whatever happened to Broadbow, who decided he was going to leave and go to the edge of the sea. Uh, and we don't know what happened to him. Uh, or them. I'm not, I can't remember if we defined uh, Broadbow's I think gender, I called him, as, uh, him, but yep. Uh, but I, I think there's something interesting there about Broadbow having somehow, despite their attempt to escape civilization, still found their way to civilization or civilization found them and the Clemens found them. So I'm going to just sort of simply say that there is, uh, what's the term? The uh, uh, the seeding, uh, the secession. I'm not quite sure what the what the term is there. 
the secession of the nation of broadband. Oh, nice. Yeah. I think either of those works. Um, and in terms of light or dark, in this dark end, uh, this you know, second piece bump of nickel bread, I'm actually going to say that this secession actually has a light tone. I dig it. This is something that is positive, at least for someone, <laughs> in this fragmenting of the Clemens. Um, can I ask, is this then like, um, th as, as like Broadbell, like finds civilization or ends up amongst it, like one rises amongst him, is this, uh, like a disparate people that extends beyond the Arvor themselves? Or is it like Arvor exclusive, I guess is part of my question. Like, uh, the fragments of the Clemens find themselves as part of this, some, some portion of them. I think... I think it's not an Arvor nice. culture. Specifically, not an Arvor mm -hmm. culture. Um, I'm trying to think if there's a scene that I want to specifically play out on this note with this event. And I'm not sure of something specific to dig in on. Um, yeah, the scenes always should be guided by, like, do we have a question, right? So, like, I don't know if it's that yeah, sure. question, right? Like, who comes to him or do people come to him? Does he find someone else? What is that? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm just going to leave it on the board there for the mo for the minute. We might come okay. back to it around okay. the end. Uh, but I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to sort of start sort of defining some of these some of this uh, folks That's watching me. the stream this one's <laughs> tough to see it's behind our cameras at the end but our final period of fractured people find themselves moving in different directions this event is the cessation of the nation of broad bow uh, which I dig very much Austin that's setting us up the focus here is the fracturing of the Clemens and it goes to you Tommy yeah so I'm looking at discovering more about the pigment with the the fall the fraction of the clemens like did that help cause it so i think for me i'm looking at an event um possibly that of uh, hmm i'm thinking of something with the pigment where it was to play with this like the idea that uh this this civilization is more focused on like the art magic that we were talking about we've been, we've been playing around with that um they there's an event where they there's a you know maybe an inventor discovered that they can harness some of the never ending pool into smaller um, liquid forms, you know paint essentially. But you know, um, and I think that starts that process of like you know people some people agree some people disagree with with this is what we should use magic for. So I think it's gonna go in here and yeah. So it's like uh, an inventor. Do they have a name? This. He, he can. His name will be uh, Pierre. Yes, Pierre. Oh, Pierre. That was yeah. decisive. <laughs> Monsieur Bucketful, yeah. this revelation of yours, it is amazing. <laughs> Adam's out there, like, <laughs> recoiling. He's yes, like, yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pierre, yeah. So it's like... <laughs> And I think this is a, you know, at at the time I think it is a lighter thing. I think it causes a lot of darker things to happen. But I do, I do see it as like a, yay, we did something with magic. Oh, yeah. we, did, we did, we I love it. I dig it. Bucket fall. I dig it. Okay. Cool. 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 Um, yeah. Do you guys have questions about this for Tommy? That feels good. I love Pierre already. I have no idea yeah. what his deal is. But I love him. If we if we want to come up with a name for the the the, the smaller forms of liquid, and so we don't use paint. If we, like we could, you know, brainstorm that real quick. If anyone has any uh, ideas for names for that? Is it maybe 
so maybe instead of just like paint in general, is it like a specific like mixture of like the pigment and something else? Like, is it just like uh, uh, Pierre's formulas? Is it that like? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Right? Like, the, the formulas that he comes up with are almost like spells, in a sense, right? I like that. So, yeah. We got okay. Pierre. There's Pierre. <laughs> uh, Bucketfall, the, the, the revelation of the formulas. Grace. Um, okay, I have a couple ideas. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an event after the Arvor are hewn down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> which is... So I've been thinking through this. I'm, I'm very much open to suggestion here. Mm -hmm. As to who it is, but what I'm what I what I'm thinking is that there is a specific group of people, a race of humanoid. Some thoughts I had were elves, uh, although I don't know, dragonborns or orcs, who have never had have none of them, not a single uh, per person in their race has ever been able to use magic. And then when the Arvors, or at least the last ones, are like tuned down, a bunch of them suddenly are able to start using magic. Um, and like, I have different thoughts there. Like elves to me, doesn't totally, I feel like they're so magical already. That doesn't really make sense. that It's them. Um, Dragonborn. I just think that seems kind of cool. Like suddenly, holy crap, suddenly they're cool. And then I, I want this, to, I wanted this to be a light event, but then I thought of like, imagine like the orc sort of like rising from like being like shunned aside, like being like pushed away oh, yeah. and like used as like pure brutality. Mo like you're our like army of like evil doers. Rather they're like, Oh wait, some of us are able to use magic now. I think there's something cool, but so I think I'm going to go with orcs. Um, so yeah. Um, uh, orcs. Uh, I don't know. Let's say um, many within orc communities, find themselves being able to use magic for the first time, which I imagine, you know, that happening as to their group leads to them separately, you know, causing some disruption within the Clemens. Um, and so they're aggressive is what you're saying. I... I don't want them to inherently be aggressive. Okay. Yep. I would like the Clemens to be very worried about the idea that suddenly these, uh, I've sort of, I don't know if people, I, I don't know. I've sort of like seen the Clemens a bit of like, they're, yeah, they feels like, are destroying. like, okay. Feels All right. Like yeah. like uh, <laughs> okay, great. So I feel like, you know, maybe they've been like using, they have like mercenary or current, what they, and they've like, or maybe not even like mercenary, they're not being paid. You know, they're very much like, and now it's like, it was quite easy because they weren't able to use. So magic. they made easy and shock troops of like, and that kind of stuff. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And now that's not so easy. There's some magic users within mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Oh man. Oh dear. I had so many things I wanted to you do. You got this. You got the storm, Taylor. I'm just like the house is being like pelted right now. Yeah, here it comes, it. huh? It's rolling right from oh, me geez. to you, east oh, to west, no. man. Yeah. Um, I have. S he goes to Pumpernickel so <laughs> fast. He already got to. Do it. Oh no! He's everywhere. He's nowhere. He needs mustard and mayo. Um, I have so many ideas here, you guys. I know. Oh. I have so many ideas. Like part of me wants to just now immediately create something new. But there's a lot of little things here that I'm very curious about. Okay. I know what I want to do. I 
would like to play a scene about the monarch of the uh, Clements being assassinated and Xanthophis implicated. Okay. And so the question is, did the Xanthophis really do it? That's all I really want. Every to time know. I hear Xanthoph, and I, Clemens, I'm like, I, I just said, I'm like, uh, Roger Clemens, cl- granting clemency. I'm like, already making, you know, <laughs> the classic when you have an NPC. So I can't, every time I hear it, like, ah, I gotta go to the Xanth office. I and gotta I, go to the Xanth. <laughs> I gotta go to the Xanth <laughs> office. Oh, man. They always take so long oh, in the Xanth office. You know, they're, they're, they're take a number, do they even use that number at the Xanth office? <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to say somebody has to play the shepherd. I'm going to say that um, somebody has to play the assassin. Um, The shepherd, the assassin. What other major characters? Oh, I know. The shepherd's heir. Uh, Oh. Oh, my goodness. Right. I want the shepherd's heir. I want the assassin. I want the shepherd. I don't necessarily care who else is there. Is there anyone like jumping out at you guys that you want to play? I kind of want to be the assassin. Oh, okay. Killer. So (laughs) I'm happy to hand it to you. Okay. And it, so, just to d- just to clarify, this sh- this shepherd is is it the it's the same one? No, maybe doesn't have to be. I, I don't know. I mean, we've been through like a few periods here. We haven't defined are they decades, are they centuries? Doesn't have to be. Could be. Is it the same one? The, That'll be for the the only mm-hmm. thing it. When you said when the broad bat with the broad bat, uh, this nation of broad, bat, it's led. Were you imagining Austin it was? Le- it's led like it's sort of like the same broad bow leaves, right? Not necessarily. Or they name. Ooh, okay, not right. necessarily. Because uh, I would say it's the only. That's the only character that I think, for sh- like if if they are there, they transcend multiple periods mm. and everything. And even then. Trees could be really effing old. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> like that's, it doesn't well, that's what give I'm you saying. Any indication yeah. of like yeah. how old anybody? Yeah, like what? Who? Like what was the shepherd? I don't know. We haven't like, defined well, it sh- yet. You tell me. The shepherd also could have. Yeah, okay, you ready? I'll, I mean, play the the shepherd shepherd like could, I'll play the shepherd. I'll play the shepherd. Ready? I will play the shepherd. Okay. And the shepherd uh, of this era. Uh, I'm going to say that in fact. Uh, they're not an elf. They were a human, and this is um the. A human, their name is, uh, is Chrysalis Dawn, and they are, in fact, uh, the 79th in the line of the Shepherds. Okay. Uh... Uh, what else did you put on the board? So we have the shepherd and the assassin. And then I want the shepherd's heir. Yeah. Oh, I'll be the shepherd's heir. Sure. Who are they? Uh. uh... Exactly. <laughs> mm. Uh. Uh, Valerius also, Dawn, right? Is Dawn was the last yeah. name of the Valerius Dawn? Yeah, that's great. Also, if if either of you guys like have a like a thing for the assassin, like take it. I don't. Um, I mean, actually, I, like... I sh- yeah, I could give up. The, I feel like this is a good one to play time. Uh, we've talked about before in a scene you can play time because like the actual assassination attempt happening. You want to play time? Mm-hmm. It'd be fun. Play time. Um, I don't know. <laughs> like, that'd be fun. A lot of pressure. <laughs> can it? Can I ask a, a defining question of this particular mm-hmm. shepherd? Um, like, what was his like? How old is he? Like, what is his like quote unquote like rule like? Like, what is the civilization that under him? That was a him? lot of defining like, questions. So I think. <laughs> so we'll take it as like a broad. Wait, like, but the that... monarch isn't is not necessarily is the she- is not the shepherd, right? 
I well, think I it think is. That's what oh, we're saying. Okay. Because like yes. oh, I was monarch imagining. is assassinated. I was in, I was imagining it was like the monarch, and then the shepherd was like a oh, like one of their like spiritual uh, leader. Then, or, then uh, let's yeah, call it that. that. Then who's playing the monarch? I'll play the monarch. Who are you? I uh, I had an idea for the monarch. It's gonna be uh, Lady Lady Winifred. Yeah. How does gotta Lady be a queen. Winifred rule? Queen, well, Queen, <laughs> queen. Winifred, but it's, yeah, like she, she, like you know, she's a lady she, to all, but yes, Queen, Queen Winifred. She uh, goes by Lady Winifred to be accessible to the people, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so is she like, I don't know, is she a light or dark monarch? <laughs> I think she, to me, she's like the uh, maybe. I don't know if the OG monarch because I don't again I don't know how much time we're part of, but I put it as like at this point she almost takes a she's a step back so it's like I would say it started out light but at this point others have taken control oh, of the monarch in a way that that's maybe it has become more sinister. Um, okay. 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 I think okay. it's got to be a long time if this is the 79th shepherd. I mean, again, time the maybe magic burns people, like, them out. They die when they're like 25. Ooh. Well, and maybe True. Lady Winifred is like an elf who may live longer. You know. True. So we've got the assassin. We've got the shepherd. Mm -hmm. We've got the monarch. I'd like to suggest a character that. I'd like to play, though I know we still need to get the Shepherd's Heir in the mix. No, I don't need them anymore because oh, okay. I, I had the wrong impression. Yep. Gotcha. Well, I would like to play uh, the the Monarch's Handmaiden. Oh, yes. Clara Viridian, who is from Xanthophis. So she has been sort of brought across and is sort of serving as the handmaiden or a, a handmaiden to the to the queen. She's originally from Xanthopus. The queen's handmaiden. And Grace, you're gonna play time? I'll play time. Can I make a suggestion that like this um the meat like these folks are the handmaiden, the shepherd, whatever, they're maybe like watching out maybe it's like a a parade seems to but it's some sort of like festival thing that's happening. And so it can pass the passive time by like the things that are happening at this like cultural event. Let's call it a parade. That... Yeah. Okay, a parade. Okay. A parade in the great metropolis. So, um, okay. You guys feeling it? Let's go around. What's the thing that we're thinking? I'm going to tell you guys right now that the shepherd is thinking. I cannot wait till this old queen dies. She is an impediment to progress. Only when the shepherds control the movement of the Clemens will we truly break free of our earthly bounds. That's what the shepherd is thinking. I think Lady Winifred, um, this the the parade that's happening. Maybe it, it she's trying. She has been trying recently to um, bring uh, bring the the Zamplis back into the fold almost. And she's trying to create some sort of maybe not back in, but like create an agreement, create some sort of like working relationship. And so I think that's where her thoughts are on today. Is hoping that this goes well, um, and and hoping that potentially this could could lead to you know working together to to harness this the, whatever you know the magic the pigment and i think uh clara is sort of very conscious of that as well you know that's why she's serving as the handmaiden and i think uh perhaps this parade uh is that what the parade was for can i yeah, yeah, I yeah sorry so I, I think what the for you so i think what the parade is i think what it can be is um, the parade happens every year, but it's um, uh, about the um, the ending of winter. 
um, on on um, Andromeda. Um, and this is a particularly uh, festival because it has been a uh, let's say it's been a, it was a particularly long um, winter. So now that winter is breaking, um, maybe that's what it's called, the breaking of winter parade. Um, uh, yeah, it's a particularly big one. Yeah. All right. So I think uh, Clara is is very much conscious of the fact that she is probably the only person person from Xanthopolis in this large crowd, certainly in the parade, and is uh, is just very aware of her being displaced uh, in this in this area. She stands out even though she is uh, here on request of the queen. I think there's a lot of anxiety in her space even as she's doing her duty. What's the assassin thinking, Taylor? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, I, I mean, do you, like... You don't have to tell us everything. Here's the thing. Uh, they talk about it here in the rules. You don't necessarily want to hold stuff close to the chest. You want us to, like, be as aware mm -hmm. as we can of where you're going so we can, like, follow where you go, right? Like, that whole, like, did yeah. they send you... Like, but we don't, if we don't know who they are, then we can't like play into what you're doing, you know? So don't feel like you have yeah. to reveal everything you're thinking, but, but, you know, empower mm -hmm. us to like role play with you, uh, improv style. Yes. Well, yeah, I'll just tell you guys my initial thought is that it is not somebody from the Xanthopolis. Mm -hmm. It is in fact like the head researcher in the and magic who is very like wise um is seemingly of the like clemens is like regarded yeah. of the clemens um and is incredibly like intelligent and like political in like her decision making and wants progress and like knows the way forward and is just knows that this needs to happen and it is not like an emotional decision. It is a very like just but being politically savvy will use like I think we should play because we're on the edge of the answer to the scene and we haven't even got yeah. into it yet. Yeah. So uh, right, where right, does right, right. the scene open, Grace? Yeah. Time. Where are we? Are we are we imagining? Sorry, I think some people are saying like, are, we, are you folks imagining you're in the parade or you're watching the parade? I imagine you were watching mm -hmm. the parade. That works for me. Yeah. It's, okay. All right. Yeah. So I think that like uh, we open, you know, in in the larger city, the biggest, the metropolis. Um, it is uh, as Melissa jokes. Yeah, you do an outdoor parade when it's now only mm -hmm. slightly chilly. Um, so I think people are like bundled up because it is this like I think a sign of strength to like be outside and be like it's the winter is breaking but we can still be outside so people are like quite bundled up um yeah and i think like there's some trumpets playing and i think someone does announce like and the parade of the breaking of winter shall begin and so like sort of uh, the beginning is lots of you know horn instrument trumpets and that's sort of the beginning of the parade as it like sort of begins past this like um this large um sort of podium uh, uplifted balcony area um where perhaps um most of these folks are at the moment Okay, excellent. I think uh, Chrysalis Dawn approaches the Lady Winifred, or uh, probably just like leans over as we're like sitting in this balcony, right? Like swishing the goblet of wine. Like, um, this winter lasted too long, my liege, but it is good I... for the people to see you out here in such vigor. I, I am as strong as my people. I will be here as they are there. She points down at the at many gathered around the, the parade. I'm I'm hoping for for a fruitful parade. I'm hoping, I'm hoping. She mutters off. It has been a harrowing time, but at least we still have the Arvor among us to help bolster the crops as the spring comes again upon us. If only we were able to do more. I cannot help but believe our destiny is greater than this. In what way, Shepard? What would... If... Let me think this for a second. No problem. 
I think that the shepherd like uh, looks yeah. to the handmaiden even like um, eyes like narrowing a bit like are you accustomed to such harsh winters amongst Anthophis? Have perhaps uh, their works with the pigment Pierre's formula helped? Indeed. Uh, the the order of Ignis has kept our hearths warm for many years now. It's been a long time since I've experienced the chill such as you do here. I'm grateful for the breaking. You do have a close trade relationship with the order, do you not? Yes. Yes, they have been of, of great help. Uh, many formulas have been developed thank, thanks to their work. Of course, Shepard. I think as the parade continues, to sort of there's sort of this sort of dancers who are um, sort of this like costumey thing of like being like almost like winter itself, wearing lots of white and then like unveiling and, and twirling and it becoming more spring like, producing flowers, handing them to people in the audience, sort of getting to like the middle ish part um, of the parade. I think that, uh, and I'm calling her Marathil. I think Marathil, this like head researcher, like isn't like saying anything. She's not really partaking in the parade, but she's sort of like, I'm. We're on like we're picturing like there's like like platforms or something like these like buildings like that run along the side that like everybody's in. I think yeah. Marathil is like on the opposite side of like li like uh the queen and is like kind of watching. Like, from the other side. Like, very, like... And, like, probably has, like, made, like, eye contact with the shepherd at some point. Like... And so I think that as the shepherd, like, looks down over the parade and, like, catches eye contact uh, with the researcher, I think that um, Chrysalis, like... I think her, her hand, like, reaches down into a pocket, her other, like, following, and, and she, like, pulls out a fur stole, right? Her, her hands, I think that's what you call them, right? Uh, is that what it is? They're, like, both her hands are kind of, like, in the stole, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And inside of the stole, she's rolling over inside of her palm uh, a heavy, like, rough-cut emerald um, from the Order of Ignis, likely. And she, like squeezes down upon it the jagged edge like uh, biting into like her palm and Marathil the researcher I think you hear her voice in your mind as she's just like um, you know what must come time has grown long something must give or change I think there's like a, there's no response and like like she's just like making eye contact with you and like nods and like throws her hood up and like walks like into the crowd and yeah I think it's around this point uh yeah gosh let's just go for it huh um <laughs> <laughs> I think do you want uh, me to set you I'll set you up a little bit there yeah, I sure. think there's like yeah. this like the, the as the dancing happens there's a bit of like a military presence near the end um as they're going and I think um as the military section you know uh these like all very nice arm or whatever as it starts of ending that would be the traditional time where like the queen the the queen or the monarch would like stand sort of front and center um to give some sort of um, speech um, or address the crowd maybe not like a full speech but would just like acknowledge the crowd very briefly in some way so he's like very much in this like prominent position I don't know if that's help more helpful or less helpful I think it's just going to make it a uh, maybe more impactful I think, <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah. I think okay, the great. shepherd would like whis whisper to the queen like um, for many years you have been the first lady among them look look how they wait for your words my queen I, they have been kind to me, as have you, the shepherd, you, you and, and all before you. You have been by my side, and I appreciate what you have done, and what your people, what your, your um, signal, your, what's it called? The, station, yeah, right? Station yeah. has, has done for, for us, the Clemens. And I think she gives, like, a little, like, soft, like, like, um, 
appreciation with like her hands. She she grabs his hand and mm-hmm. shakes it confidently, um, and uh, heads heads the heads up to the balcony. Like um, she's pretty old, so I'm assuming she like waddled up um, and like got up there. Yeah. Clara Viridian, uh, kind of you know a half a step behind you, kind of helping uh, Lady Winifred kind of ascend the the couple stairs up to the little platform. You know, being that support for um. Milady. Yes. People of Clemen, the breaking of winter for it is happening. It has been. So, a- yeah. I think, uh, like, as almost as soon as like the lady starts speaking, what like the characters don't see, but maybe like time does see, is like there's a uh, within her own like stole. There's like a red gem uh, that is like squeezed. And this, um, gosh. <laughs> uh, does, okay, here's a question. Um, the queen is wearing a like coat of some sort, I assume. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely got some heavy layers on there to keep her warm. Still chilly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, the coat starts to grow incredibly hot and eventually catches on fire. <gasps> and she is just burning. <laughs> She's frantic. And, like, yeah. there's, and there is like a red liquid, not blood, that is like just seeping from this jacket. And it is, is liquid flame that is like impossible to like. Time, Austin. Is your ca- were you gonna say your character goes to like, like help in some way? Yeah, she like immediately is like the flames lick up. Uh, Clara sort of rushes forward, attempting to like you know pull the cloak free and try to I, you know. I, yeah, I think I think as I'm gonna introduce yeah. minor character yeah. that yeah. the guard there will be guards there who would seeing this happening and that you as a somebody from uh Zamp office would be like uh like it's it's her sees her and they would like grab. <sighs> You're ca- yeah. No. And, like start to take you. Wait. It's an imposter. The researcher. I could see into this one's mind. They've switched themselves. <laughs> the guards are like. <laughs> I think at this point, what? I think the shepherd like stands forward in front of the guards, like places herself in between the guards and the queen who is burning and the handmaiden trying to like pull the coat off. And she says, "Um, it's all beyond you, you simple-minded fools. The magic you could never understand, you incompetent orcs. The researcher is Xanthophen. She's a traitor to us. I've seen in her mind. She has made a plan for this and studied." Quickly, quickly to her station, gather everything. It must be brought to my quarters. She must be hunted, scoured, driven from this place. Oh, they absolutely follow your orders. The queen is on I know. fire. Yeah, I know. Follow like, your orders. Uh, what's happening yeah. here is like the shepherd is also kind of using magic to like muddy their minds enough that they're ignoring the fact that the queen is right. burning. And I, and I <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, Tom, if you would yeah. like to role play yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm on fire. <laughs> yeah, I think she's like severely on fire. I think at a certain point they are able to get it off after much work between them, but I think it's it's too little too late. I think at this point um, she's she's fallen to the ground, and I think she grabs Clara's hand and um, says a, a, a phrase that is kind of a mantra for for the Zan- um uh, of "May the ink never dry," and she falls. And may color never fade. And uh, I think uh, in years to come, there is a. You know, as this sort of moment becomes legend, there is a, a like sort of an imagery that's like often replicated about this moment in history of uh, Clara Viridian standing over the body of uh, of the queen, the flames licking, uh, and oftentimes in a lot of artistic depictions of Clara, she's depicted as her dress catching fire as well as she's sort of like from like the base of her dress sort of licking up uh, in this space. Uh, Did she die? She does not, but there's a sort of like the the depiction of her. I think she is probably still arrested 
alongside this researcher as potentially being amongst it. I think that, um, but, uh, I think that, yeah, if I can really complicate this more, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that the, the simple thing is that, um, in the midst of this moment, while Clara comforts, like the dying queen, the guards, like race hunting for the researchers laboratory, I think Clara, like, um, hears the voice of the shepherd in her mind, like, um, I will die soon. The years grow quick upon me, but you will teach my heir the ways of the pigments. The Clemens have reached the apex of what we can learn, only joining what we know. Will we ever do better? I think Clara, in her confusion, nods. Perhaps that agreement is more binding than she realizes. And so, is that I that guess that's, that's a, yeah. No, I no. guess that's the scene. I do think that's the scene. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know. You guys tell me what is what's the answer to the question? Did the the Xanthophis really do it? Clearly not. You were a re you uh, t your researcher was not from Xanthophis, right? No, you were like but a head was researcher using the paints. Gotcha. Like so. Gotcha. The implication, certainly. But no, it was like the head researcher of the Clemens. Um, that got very complicated. I was like reaching for a place where like I thought that the shepherd like was like had like a lover in Xanthophis or wanted to be Xanthophin. I, I thought there was like a twist in there. I don't know if that got <laughs> confusing. But so the answer is no. Yeah. Uh, they did not. No? Uh, I'm instantly in love with this research. Marathil did it on <laughs> Clara's Marithil. order. Clara, too. I'm I like, like Clara. Yeah, I, like Clara. Clara. Art. <laughs> I, I just imagine, like, that art to me, what it, like, I think, oh. like, me, like, she doesn't get arrested. Is that, and then she's, like, maybe, she, like, a uh, apprentice, like, uh, her, the shepherd's heir is, the apprentice, is, like, she has, this, like, fire within her now to, like, re like re to do revenge or, like, whatever. It's so good. It's so good. Yeah, awesome. yeah there's a lot of. Oh, you go. Go ahead. I was gonna, just you coming up, going off my random phrase with your own random phrase. That's brilliant. So good. Oh yeah, that was good. Like, that yeah. was incredible. May the ink never dry. May the colors mm -hmm. never fade. Never yeah. Dry. yeah. Gosh, a gold, absolute gold. Wow. Okay. It sounds like everybody in the scene is like, wow, that was yeah. pretty great. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nobody, <laughs> nobody wanted to be Clemens in that scene. Not, nobody. Everybody. Like, oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, um, yeah. That was my very long turn as I finished, and that, uh, right? That was my turn. Didn't I just create that? Yeah. Okay. That was, that was scene. Yeah. Taylor, you're up. God, I just like to not think about anything like in the midst of that. It's so wild because um, you are like going all over the place in terms of like thinking these big historical things and then like role playing a character and like yeah, um, I really yeah I dig this game. It's kind of cool. Yeah, this is so great. Um, I had it. What, what were my ideas before? I was thinking. I know I derailed everything. Come back to me. Come back. A nice to me. big scene. Um. Good God, house is like groaning. Jeez, terrifying. Um, what did I want to do? Oh, oh, right, right, right. Um, so I think I want to. Uh, kind of like create a branch here um, of kind of going off the like you know this ending period uh, our final period of uh, fractured people find themselves yeah. moving in different directions yeah I think um, maybe not necessarily underneath that but maybe um you could shove a new period in front of it, too, of course. Yeah. Gosh. Tough choices. Yeah, I've, like, I've had, like, a thousand things now that are back in my head. Um, because, gosh, I kind of want to... Yeah. 
I'm really curious about a lot of stuff, to be honest. Mm. Yeah. The orcs, Pierre Bucketfall. Uh, I wanted. I, those are my two. Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think that. Jeez. Yeah, because these periods are like. Super I'm very long. curious about Falks with Isle as well. Like, I feel like that's an interesting thing. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you know, I'm just going to go for, like, this one because I can't think through the other. Yeah, what becomes a Falk Swift Isle later? It's a great name. Mm. That's a good one. Um, I feel like I need to come up with a list of, like, really great names before we do this next time. <laughs> yeah, same, you know same, what I mean? Same. Like, the five of us are going to spend the next, like, three weeks just sending each other names. You know what the other... <laughs> this, is, this is very random, but my pre-Brand Steel, my friend and I in high school used to... It's like basically like plan out. We do like celebrity mm -hmm. survivor seasons where we like put together tribe and then like plan them out like on paper. Be like, okay, if this tribe goes, like, what they do? And one of the ways we used to come up with tribe names is you just like mash your keyboard oh, together. Oh, yeah. Like and then you just like uh -huh. pick, you find a stuff section in there yep. that it's like, what's Mawak? Like, that's yep. the tribe name. M W A K. And I feel like that's a name. Now that's a name. You know, a little you know? bit of a, Walk. a face roll on the keyboard and see what you come up with. Oh, no, we lost yeah. the tail. Oh, no. uh, she wasn't just thinking, Tom, you're muted. That's probably good. You're probably yeah, yelling. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> <gasps> no, was, the ghost of Pumpernickel took her. No. Oh, no. 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 Um, Nickel, no. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say with naming is my favorite thing is to just take two objects like bucket and fall and be like, all right, this is yep. the name now. <laughs> Let me uh, repair this yeah camera. I'm big. There we go. Everything was looking clean for like way too many hours. There was no way that could endure for the mm -hmm. whole night. Uh, what do I got here? Transform. Uh, yep, let's edit that transform. Yep, let's scale to inner bounds. Cool. Oh, boy, now you're actually big. I was just lost power for a second. Yeah, figured. That's okay. Uh, we can, like, hang out. We'll give her a second here, yeah. but we can certainly, like, press on if she ends up getting hung I up like for we were a second. Like... Oh, four hours. Yeah, we ever will get like a rant. Ever will go turn yeah. off the lens. No way. <laughs> I was afraid to do too many scenes, but I also know that like uh, they can be a little daunting, and so I wanted to just try yeah. to like be bold and be like, okay, boom, yeah, go for it. Uh, I mean, go for it. I mean, they do. I think that they do feel a little bit daunting because you're you're so you're getting. I mean, microscope, right? You're you're mm -hmm. getting so honed in mm -hmm. on something that. You know, it doesn't maybe feel as like for me some of the fun of this game is being like, you know, this big picture, st like the world building, big picture stuff. But I often do find like the most fun I've had like last time and this time is like these little scenes where like I what I love about this the scenes is that you can be so distinct about very small little cultural things that is much harder to do in a bigger like when you're when you make the folks of islands you want you know, like you're not going to spend your whole time being like this is what they're like culturally right like you could later but in this it's like you can just do it in and in a way that's so fun of like um yeah this parade is called the breaking of winter mm -hmm. you know like mm -hmm. i think like it's very like you just say that thing then that's a thing and yeah. then it exists. You it's know? the show don't tell energy, right? Yeah, you know sure. what I mean? For it's sure. like that distinction between like the exposition dump and like here are characters living in the world. And what does that like tell us about the world? Um, and it's really yeah. interesting. I don't know if anybody out there like sci fi nerds foundation, uh, Isaac Asimov's foundation series. This is one of like the seminal kind of pillars of modern science fiction. It's considered one of like the great works in the genre. It's a show, right? Yeah. Apple's no. doing it yeah. now. And, um, gosh it's good it's it's not like extraordinary it's not like elite tier part of it is like incredible lee pace is doing a thing but the the story of foundation is a lot like this game of microscope where the fact is the single individuals at these very specific moments in time over like hundreds and thousands of years set the course 
for peoples, for like kind of whole civilizations that will come after and have these small moments that can happen in the blink of an eye in, you know, the room where it happens, right? right. Like they set, they set things in, in motion, right? Um, anyway. Taylor, oh. welcome back. We're glad Pumper Nickel yeah. Boats didn't get you. Yeah. <laughs> Everything went boom yeah. <laughs> and immediately came back on. But of course, like the internet took forever to like reset itself. Always does. That was fun. Oh my gosh. Um, okay. So I was, what I was going to say <laughs> hmm. before the power very rudely cut me off. Um, I think what I'm going to go for is that there is a. Um, a new period in which like orcs start to like take over. Wow! Like, they start to like expand uh, with like their newfound like you know access to magic. They start to like overthrow their like masters, quote unquote. Um, um the masters being uh, literally the Clemens, huh? Yeah. So, yeah. So the orcs. Is there some great leader, or is this like a grassroots uprising? <laughs> now there's probably a leader. And a spaceship of cartoon character like uh, heroes who show up and tell them that they're being oppressed. Or... <laughs> <laughs> it's me, <laughs> I'm the leader of the orcs. <laughs> Get out. Hey, uh, get out. Get out. You don't have to be impressed. <laughs> uh, we've, we've discovered magic. <laughs> <laughs> Ken Wallace Luthelwaff. Ken Wallace Luthelwaff in the chat. Ken Wallace Luthelwaff. Yes. Uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Um, I love it, but I'm sorry. We put no interplanetary travel on true. our palette. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, our own... sorry. I like how I tried to break my own no. You like that? That's, uh... yeah. <laughs> That's how committed I am. All right. The orcs led by Gorgo. Ooh. Um, with their newfound access to magic start a revolution oh sick yeah and gosh because it's pretty good for the orcs but it's like pretty bad for the clemens but I mean, you, it's no there's no right or wrong light yeah. or dark you know i think I mean? it's light because it's in the orcish can i ask yeah, it's a revolution this revolution that the orcs uh that gorgo leads of the orcs mm -hmm. like they're just attacking the system the hierarchy the government what do they do to like the population <sighs> or this is a question like i'm asking like what's what's it about and depending on the answer, I'm going to have to make a joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Gorgo specifically. I think Gorgo is, like, pretty intelligent and, like, gathers these, like, specific orcs that are, uh, like, have the access to magic. Mm -hmm. And, like, I think, like, makes them leaders. Okay. And, um, yeah, it's, like, you know, there's definitely, like, some war happening but i don't think that they're necessarily necessarily like enslaving people like i think they're like trying to do better than like what they were like how they were treated okay At least how, <laughs> Gorgo, how it starts go 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 um okay that's taylor austin Melissa loves a easy breezy. She does, revolution. yeah. Melissa loves a little <laughs> light revolution. She, she likes an easy breezy revolution on a weekend. Uh, Austin, Same. you're you're the lens. You're back. I'm back. The last uh, last round on this this focus on the fracturing of Clemens. Very excited by this orc uprising. Certainly one of our fractured people. 
Where do I want to drill down into this? Where do I want to drill, drill down into this? There's a lot of interesting stuff. There's a you know? lot There's of really a ton interesting of meat on the bones here. Yep. Yeah. Oh no! Wait, did we crash? Shoot, are we still online? Mm -hmm. No, nope. I'm still up. Okay, cool. Uh, it says there's a network error. I think it's down. Mine, gl yeah, mine's off. I will. Uh, it gives me time to think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, hmm. I fired us back up. Let's see if this works. I think we're back. I see we're, us. Back. we're back. We're back. Sorry about that. Uh, weather fighting us, friends. Hey, we are back. We're back. We're back. Woo! Huzzah! Taylor, are you on mute? Thanks, guys. I'm, I'm. I'm just commenting that like we said we back, and like my entire like house started to shake. Like, <laughs> 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 okay, great. I ran the session last night and I started the whole thing off with a terrible thunderstorm mm -hmm. and rain. And meanwhile, like Prez is sitting there with no power on his phone. Troy's like, my house is about to blow away. Like, I was like, oh gosh, maybe <laughs> this was insensitive. Uh, <laughs> I, hmm. I would have to think about the camera layout if I do this again next time. I don't know if it's better probably to go across the bottom and cover all that stuff so we can see. Yeah, all that stuff that sort of stays the same. Oh, geez, this is this is tough. Getting, you got hard choices harder. here, man. I know it. It's really it gets like challenging to like figure out where you want to go and what you want to dig into. You know, yeah. um, I think this is like definitely the kind of game. I like love to imagine like my fantasy is like the yeah like a Thanksgiving day but more like Friendsgiving with like people all day hanging mm -hmm. out yeah. the like full yeah. day of like food and and drink and yeah. companionship and like uh you know improv. Yeah. I love that there's like a game for this mm -hmm. too because like there's like a I'm I feel like I'm being like held back. Like, I'm like, you know, like, I'm strapped in. I can't just be like, this thing and this thing and that. And then this person does this. And then, like, it's structured and, like, It's very you know. structured. I get such an idea in my head. And then by the time it comes around to me, yeah. like, I don't even want to do that yeah. anymore. I don't want, like, or it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Right? Like, somebody changed the world in which in, in a way that that idea yeah. doesn't make yeah. sense anymore. Which is really and there's, cool. like, a strategy of, like, you only have so many turns. So it's like, mm -hmm. well, I, I, do I want to push things more in this direction? Do I want to go to this? Yeah. yeah. It's, I liked being held back a little bit. Yes, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. I appreciate all you guys in the chat hanging out with us. Um, I hope you're like digging it. I could easily see doing a game like this too, where we like are all about the feedback from the chat, right? Uh, okay. you know. yeah. Yeah. yeah, jumping off ideas there. Okay. I think I think what I'm interested in in sort of digging into is obviously we we put the assassination with a lot of focus mm -hmm. with the sink we did but i feel like i want to dig into a little bit of the fallout mm -hmm. um and as as vain as it is i want to dig into the fallout of clara yeah i dig yeah. it yeah. um and i think what happens with clara as she is sort of bound by this sort of agreement to the shepherd to bring more of the uh, this sort of pigment magic into into play into Clemens. Is that she becomes representative and perhaps the, the next shepherd, the shepherd's heir. <gasps> That she's been sort of tasked to train with the magic of, of the pigments. She becomes like her Trigger. advocate. Yeah, I think. Oh, geez, this is. I'm trying to think of how to how to sort of phrase this. What I want is for Clara and this next shepherd to be what what bridges the assassination into this pursuit of dark magic yeah. or what is perceived 
as dark magic in Clemens. Mm -hmm. um, that Clemens starts to view the the magic of formulas and that specific way of tapping into things as being somehow inherently adversarial. Yeah. Oh, no, that's, that's, as I'm saying it, it's feeling messy. I'm also not loving uh, some of the contextual stuff about that. Uh, uh, maybe I want to move away from that. I'm sorry. I feel like I'm slowing this down. No, oh, man, this is Yo, the good, nature good. of the beast. You're really fine. You know, like part of it is like, you know, thinking. I think this is why. Like again, I wanted to play it. I have grand ideas for this, where we sit down with like a very specific intention to like let's build a world that we're gonna role play in. You know, um, I think like doing it for Dragonfly was liberating because we knew where we wanted to get. But at the same point, to Grace's like statements earlier, it like held us back a little bit because we felt afraid to step on each other a little bit. You know, um, so I'm really interested in like playing this a bit more in the next few months and get into a spot of like, let's sit down with no clue what we want to build. And then when we're done, be like, gosh, now what do we play in this world? Like when we started, there was a very real like, oh, we could play Apocalypse World in this game when we're done now it's like feels more like D D as we've like dug around on it a bit. Uh, we have tree people and all of this, but. It's it's a meandering thought exercise, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's gonna take some time. It's I, I think one of the things about D, &D is that it feels so because I think m most of us are so um, accustomed to it. It feels the easiest to sort of like if you end up modding mm -hmm. it a bit, you know, like you end up like you're like, yeah, I, I could see we're like a tree person, you know, like they're humongous, but like what you know, or like some whatever. Whereas like in a game, you don't know as much it's harder to be like oh uh, this person will be th like this this race mm -hmm. can be this or like this class type can be this but yeah no i feel you yeah so i think what i'm gonna do is i'm actually gonna i'm gonna scrap where i was trying to go with clara because it's not quite like refining the way i want it so i'm not quite sure where that sort of it fits okay instead i'm gonna build on this period uh that we just added of the orc revolution oh yeah uh and we're gonna add an event that is the marriage of Gorgo to the uh, the princess of the Order of Ignis. Ooh. <laughs> um, yes. So, I think you hear that. That's very <laughs> Tommy loves a wedding. Tommy's just trying to get that wedding ding, next ding, to a minute. <laughs> yes. No one can tell me seven microscopes from now we get our wedding. We get it now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yes. dude. Oh, my Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of a name for our, for our wedded bride. You want me to jam? You want me to mess up my? I just got a very like crystal image of a, uh, and and I don't know who was gonna get this, but like a uh, Finn from uh, Adventure Time and like Fire Princess. <laughs> yes. Meme. <Yeah. laughs> I know. Uh, meme. 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 Oh, I love that name. Oh, name. Megan. Megan. That's a good name. Megan. Okay. I love, I love all of these things. I'll, I'll put this one in the chat. I'll let the uh, <laughs> uh, princess name of uh, of the Order of Ignis. Yes. I don't, I don't love, I don't like the term princess. I want a different title. But uh... um, gosh, I'm really bad. Uh, like Zara Sultana, you got a you got a bunch of different ones. You could go like, uh, you know. Like Dame Duchess Baroness, these are all like lesser noble titles. I don't know. I'm not good. I I don't know how to type. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Exarch, her grace could, could, could totally make keyboard? one up. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to think of like flame related, like uh, Ember. 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 Uh, 
the ember. Yeah. So she's going like she will like burst into flame, oh, but that's okay. so the ember neem. Yeah. That's ember cool. neem. Oh, that's amazing. I love that. funny how little stuff like that gets her like it, so it does get me very excited actually. they're not called the princess they're called the, they're called ember. the ember it's so yeah, it's way it so cool yeah. it's way cooler i love perfect it. yeah so yeah so we've got the marriage of, of gorgo to, to ember neem of the order of ignis uh happening at some point point during this this uprising uh Incredible. is this a relationship with uh like love in it I think okay. m- maybe. Oh, how we're we're, get, we're we're approaching the two hour. We're approaching the four hour mark. Yeah, we are. <laughs> the question is, do we want to do a scene around this or not? I'm going to sort of put this on, like, do we want a scene at the marriage or do we want to kind of build out more stuff uh, to maybe answer that question of is this a marriage of love or of politics? Um. Does it make sense to be like the like the like meeting where they're like agreeing to and like that doesn't mean there mm-hmm. isn't luck because mm-hmm. it could be like we love yeah. each other, yeah. <laughs> we love us more, you know, love us more. <laughs> I'm Gorgo. Yeah. I, I feel like I, I will say like the Gorgo that I'm picturing in my head is like this very like sweet like intelligent like orc, you know. Yeah. So like you know. I'm not in a like frantic rush. You guys can tell me, you know, like I'm going to follow your lead here. If we want to like play a scene out here, then that's cool. Uh, you know, I, 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 I'm cool with whatever. I know like Tommy and Grace still haven't been the lens. Uh, and so I don't mm. want to deprive you of that opportunity. I'm happy to hang out, but. Well, I know there's also sort of the, the option for, you know, like, like a, a dictated scene. Sure. Um, so maybe scene. what we yeah. do is like, we take like a couple minutes to kind of collectively define like, how do we want this and sort of approach as like a dictated thing and i'll kind of take the lead a little bit but uh yeah i think we'll sort of add a dictated scene here of that meeting between gorgo and neem uh and the the question is like is this a a marriage of uh for love or power um I can't wait till till we write this book and then and then like years later when the TV show happens and they're like it's pronounced yeah. Neem. I'm like, I'm it Nagum. It's pronounced Neem. Neem. It's pronounced Neem. That's how they're pronouncing the name. Come it's on, name. it's an ancient name. It's an ancient oh, name. Oh, they're ruining the book. They're ruining the book. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> they're ruining the book. <laughs> I can't believe they dropped the E. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <come on. laughs> right. So, I think I think the scene ultimately, you know, we we see uh, we see Gorgo as this like very intelligent sort of erudite sort of orc who sort of led this revolution to establish a better space for his his people, his community, um, divided and maybe, you know, destroyed a lot of, a lot of space in this area, but they've established something new. And I think as he meets Ember Neem, uh, the order of Ignis, this kind of like dwarven like, uh, people, I think what we see is we see, a a kind of quiet conversation uh in this this garden that has no trees because the arvor have long left the trees are gone but there are small you know small shrubs small bushes that kind of fill out the space and the the garden is quiet it's early spring it's beginning to bloom And they have a conversation of what is why they are here. And I think ultimately they're both very transparent. Gorgo is intelligent and wanting to make this a better place for his people. I think Neem expresses a similar thing for her and for her people. The Order of Ignis helped Xanthophis. 
they don't necessarily have a bone to pick with Xanthos, Xanthophis, but their place in this world has been supplier. You know, it's not been a place of their own standing and that this union can be something that allows both these communities to take their stand in the greater world. But I think through this like very political conversation, there is a meeting of the minds that is very clear and apparent. I think the answer to this question, or at least my answer to this question that I'm posing, is that this is a marriage for power, but it is a marriage that develops into love oh. over over time. A tale as old as time. <laughs> Speaking of different humanoid species that exist. Are you talking about this cat? <laughs> <laughs> Pinky. <laughs> yeah, who is who is Neem? What is, is the, uh... Do we have a like what? Do we have a, a name we want to give to like the orc? Uh, uh, Peoples. Culture? Yeah. Gosh, does Gorgo rename them oh. the Gorgons? The Gorgons. <laughs> the Gorgons. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that from uh, Toy Soldier? Isn't that, uh... Oh, it's a creature from Greek mythology. Yeah. Yeah. A Gorgon. Aren't they the Gorgonites, though? And does anybody know? Like, uh, is it Toy Soldiers? What's the one? Toy Soldiers like... is an amazing film. Yeah. Um... Yeah. Is it Toy Soldiers? Toy yeah, Soldiers is the one where they're all like prep school kids, right? And they're like fighting a guerrilla war yeah. against a bunch of yeah. 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 <laughs> small. So I'm going to give a small. What if he renames them? I like the Gorgon, but what about? Yeah, small soldiers. What about the Go Go's? Like he's just like Go Go Revolution. <laughs> <laughs> that that's a specific like group of them, right? Yeah, yeah. they're like their <laughs> their yeah. channeled art magic is is that of uh, is that of disco dance? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. Okay, so nobody remembers small I soldiers. Remember small soldiers. Sorry. <laughs> I think I have the action figures here somewhere. Oh, wow. Small soldiers. Small, I remember Small Soldiers, but it was a little behind my time. Uh, my cousin loved it. Yeah, it's like I'm, it's like mm -hmm. seven, so I'm like. I yeah, remember this I just watch it. Like, I was not allowed to watch it, and I had like. I I seem to remember the like military guy being like actually like super super. Yeah, like, it's. I movie. think for our rating, yeah. it was a, it was a dark movie a little bit. But yeah. You're talking about toy soldiers is from like when I was oh. seven in the eighties, Grace. Yeah, and, yeah. Okay, so That's I was eleven. I love that though. Those kids like the terrorists come to the school and they're fighting a guerrilla war, you know? It's like uh, oh man. It's a little like red dawn, but very like focused into the school itself. Yeah. The go go's are the royal family. It's so good. <laughs> the royal guard. Are they the are they the Gorgons? Is that I, they are? I mean, I think it's pretty the... good. Gorgon is like an intimidating name right. for a horde of magic-using orcs that are fighting for freedom, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, okay, cool. Uh, so that, Austin, I guess, is you having dropped both an event and a scene to yeah. like close out your round as the focus. Uh, this means uh, what? Uh, Taylor, if you would like, you can create a legacy. You could choose a legacy. If there's something here lingering, you want to insert a period or you want to uh, uh, dictate a scene. I'm lying. It's actually just an event or a scene. Uh, yeah. You can like pick anything, basically, a person, a place, a thing, an idea. Uh, you don't have to. We can keep plugging along, but it's an option you have. Um. Hmm. Interesting. And then, uh, Tommy, yeah, you'll be up next. You'll have your focus here. And, yeah, we'll see where you take us. I kind of want, like, Marathil to, like... Gosh. Marathil, the head magical researcher of the Clemens and yeah. assassin. There's, there's just a couple things like something with Marathil, like kind of like founding like some sort of order. Um, but I also like like uh, we haven't talked about the R4 in a while. 
Um, yeah, you know, actually, why not put the two together? I think that there's an event. What's the that, legacy going to be for you? Is it uh, yeah, Marathil? I think, yeah, I think it's Marathil. Marathil, like, yeah, she, like, just, like, pieces out and, like, goes in search of the Arvor, I think. That leave after, um, after the Clemen, Clemens, like, turn to dark magic. Okay, so you're going to just shove another event in there after the Clemens pursue dark magic. Um, yeah. But I think it's like it's like af it's like a bit after they pursue magic, and it's like it's after they kill like many of the Arbor to like get the power from them. So it's like in this, it's in the, like the last autumn. Um, yeah. So I guess it's after. So Marathil like having like continuing to lead. Um, and yeah, maybe like making a choice that like she regrets in like killing the Arbor, go in search of them. Um, especially after taking the air of like the shepherd. Um, so she's going after all of that. She like picks up to go after them and find them. Yeah. Okay. She like abandons her research and like <coughs> shifts gears. Okay, cool. Was in search of the R4 and the shepherd. It is kind of fascinating because, like, as it lies here towards the end of our timeline and the seceding of the nation of Broadbow, like, I wonder what if those things are connected at all. Um, yeah, I have a yeah. lot of interesting thoughts here. Um, gosh, is it light or dark? That is the question. I don't know. I'm going to say. I mean, she managed to escape the pursuers that, um, what's yeah. her name there? Chrysalis Dawn sent <clears throat> after yeah. her. Yeah. And doesn't, doesn't the shepherd, isn't like, it's like point the finger at the, at the recent, doesn't, is that what I you did, did in that scene? but we. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting, like that doesn't hold, right? Because like the story of the thing is like the. Well, I think uh, we. Uh, Xanthophis are implicated, yep. right? I think the Xanthophis are implicated uh, because I think that what I said is that the researcher was not, in fact, um, one of us, that the researcher yeah. was Xanthophis, like wearing the face of oh, the I researcher. I think my my interpretation there was oh, that, like, the shepherd wanted the researcher killed to, like, gain control of whatever they had. Yeah. You know? I, I think that Marathil, like, she leaves and goes to like the Xanthophis. Like I think that like she goes and like starts researching with them and like mm -hmm. starts like helping that like head the research for like what can you do with the pigment? And that's like, the irony of all of it that you killed the queen with the pigment and then you end up like yeah. fleeing to the Xanthophis. So like did the Xanthophis well, kill her? Like well that's an interesting yeah. question cuz like Well you... the shepherd like you know sent people after her. So mm -hmm. she had to get out of dodge. Also Kind of interesting if the Arbor are totally gone, like Maritha leaving and being like, can't find them, go go to the Xanth office, you know? Like I think like, it's like after. Um, I, I think know. it's like she goes to the thin Xanth office, researches there, like gets probably pretty far. And then like like finds out that the Clemens like killed a bunch of them. And that the Arvor like took the shepherd and is like. Would I? Can I make the recommendation? You just adjust that event then to say like after years of like pursuing research within Xanthos. Yes. You know what I mean? Just put that footnote yes. in there. Yeah. Um, cool. Okay. Is that like a hidden? I feel like my of like the Clemens pursue dark or uh, what is it? Yeah, they've used they they use dark magic to like destroy the Arbor. like pretty mm -hmm. explicitly, I think. But it, it was like but. not all of them, right? It was just like a. I think their civilization. But then the is last among them, yeah, like well, yeah, yeah, stragglers. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I saw it as like the bright bark, like the people that followed bright bark. Like those are the ones that yes. like, got destroyed. But there's still like the remnants of you know bitter berries and like the the different yeah. arbor yep. societies that were out there. Um. Okay. Cool. 
That's Taylor, like, digging into the legacy there of uh, Marithil. And that's going to bring us to you, Tommy, as the lens. So you get to, like, set the focus for us here. Yeah, I think we, we've definitely focused a lot on the ink well. I think I want to focus my my focus at, on the uh, the sources in general. You know, we have the one oh, that the Cleveland yeah. eventually found that we haven't talked about. But that being said, I am going to do an event that focuses more on the ink. Um I, I feel bad for Gogo, but I might go a little bit darker with them. Uh, I think there that there's an event that I would like to do towards the orcs where they want to take control of the sources. And I think um, that's also why this marriage happens, because the order the order goes where the power is. So they're like, okay, now we need to get in with these orcs. And so my idea is this battle of the broken glass. And uh, the Xan office at this point has been like, you know, is is barely holding on at this point. They've now lost Marithal. She's gone off with the research. I think at this point um, that they're sorry. Is your focus the so- the source yes, that me, you want to call it? Yeah. Like yes. There. Thank you. Yeah. Put it in there. Uh, and so this event that I'm thinking up is yeah. So it's like the Battle of Broken Glass. Um, any uh, left, anyone that's left of, of the Zan office uh, uh, is at the Inkwell protecting it. And I think a descendant of Bucketfall, who has followed in his, his maybe his father's or his grandfather's uh, footsteps, steps up, gets captured by, like, gets ta- basically gives himself up to let the remnants move on the fragments you know the the fractured people of the xanth xanos will go off and they will be like cr- called the broken glass i know that's a lot <laughs> no that's rad dude cool. so the question that's is so is cool. that its own period is like the rising of the Ooh. broken glass like its own period right as they're like separating yeah i guess i just saw the, the i'm okay with that being a, uh, i can create a period of that and then i also want to do an a but see i want the event right before the marriage of Gorgo and and uh, name because I think like that the battle almost spurs the uh, the order to want this marriage to happen because they need that yeah go for it yeah then put an event there I'm just like asking questions you know I think yeah, that's yeah, totally yeah. cool yeah if the like event is literally like uh, the battle of broken glass which leads to like the founding of uh, of like the nation of broken glass or whatever it is the broken glass people whatever you want to name it I dig that though that's very very cool that's, that's mm. so cool I love that <laughs> love it that is, like, how... that is a name that is so good <laughs> I've been sitting here like since Austin's been doing the org stuff. I'm like, okay, wait, I have an idea now. Yes. <laughs> Incredible. I've been sitting on the same thing. I have this idea that I've been like so worried that the, the focus would not lend itself to it. I just <laughs> get to sit on it, but I'm very excited. Oh, you're right. digging this Amazing. focus, huh? Yeah, okay. I am too. This focus immediately excited me. This is a very good one. Um, the book is great, right? It's got a lot of like little uh, suggestions right towards the back of it, right? The rules are pretty simple. You guys can see it here. Like we're we're playing around the edges of them. We could be sticking a little bit harder to certain things, but we're getting our feel for it and like getting a vibe here. Um, the whole like not being collaborative. It's I think it's the, my like you know it's the not, not not being collaborative, but like it's as you like work together. But they did this like this is my idea. We're doing it. It's so fun to just be like, and sometimes you want yeah. it from other people too. Like what it. You know, I'm thinking it's orcs. But does I mean, make, we you know, all, um, for anybody that, you know? out there who doesn't know us and has like wandered in and is checking this out, uh, the crew of us are all dungeon masters together at Post Show Recaps. Taylor is not a full time DM, though she certainly spends a lot of time there playing with us and is like a very, uh, you know, creative headspace. But we do so much work as DMs collaboratively in that space where we like vibe ideas off each other and it feeds and it feeds and it feeds, right? And it's so like inherent to the process. Um, like I know I've had it both ways where somebody's like, God, I'm stumped. I don't know how to get around this. And I throw an idea and they're like, Oh my God, that's three sessions, you know? And I've had the same thing where we're all sitting together and I'm like, I don't know. I'm not feeling inspired. I'm not sure where I want to go with this. And somebody says something that like wakes me up and brings me to life, you know? So, uh, Ben talks about it in here. Uh, the, the like reluctance, the, the like do not collaborate is a very intentional design choice that is meant to like empower us and to create a little bit of a push and pull, you know, uh, for us to be able to like build things up and knock them down and like, um, 
Yeah, really. Who, who, Melissa? Uh, and I love it. But it's hard to stick to. It's against my instincts, you know. I like it because it's not where my default headspace goes. The notion of like, no, don't ask, choose, decide, right? And like uh, the notion of like sticking to that and getting better at like the kind of things we decide. Because we talk about improv, but like that's what you're doing, right? There's no, like, you just have to like come up with the thing and you're looking for a thing that's going to like feed the other person that they can build on. Right. And that's ultimately what we're all doing here. So, yeah. Yeah. I think that's a great point. Yep. I, um. I, uh, I agree. <laughs> yeah. That's a great point. I agree. Yeah, that's, <laughs> a great point. That's, a great <laughs> that's a great point. All right. I have my event. Cool. Then Josh, if you're asking me, it had to be unintentional. Uh, anyway, yeah. Um, so the Xanthop, they're like, they're not really a thing by this point. Is that, yeah? Is yeah. That, I mean, they, we really, it says the remnants that's of all them. I imagine, we did a lot of bad stuff. To that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Marisol just like, she just left. The yeah. Like the, yep. the family of the bucket ball, they're just trying to keep it together at this point. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Uh, so yeah, that's the event, and I, I guess I have to. We, we do a scene, right? Off that, I think it's just like the end of the battle. I think it's just that scene, uh, and I think the question is, um, hmm, I feel like I might have answered it in my long tirade. So now I have to think of a new question. It's up to you. You can like dictate it, you know. But yeah, um, you can yeah. Just... yeah, I think that's what it would. I you know, not to take it away from you guys. No, no, but no, it's fine. No. I do think, okay. yeah, the question would be like, um, what happens to the Xana office after this. And I think like I kind of answered it is like, Buck, if the, you see the scene um, in front of the ink fall, the, the, the last remnants of the soldiers, um, you know, barely holding on, barely holding their stance, but they're still standing strong and firm, ready to battle to the last of them is left. And I think uh, Buck of Paul comes out from the back and gives, uh, gives himself up to, to, uh, to be like, I'll I'll work with you to understand the ink well. I will I will help you channel its power. Just let my people go. Let them go. And so I think that's how the broken glass become uh, off nomads off into the world uh, to discover something else. Um, as he gets taken with with Gorgo and and the Gorgons. <laughs> I love it. That's pretty dope, actually. It's almost like he yeah, ransoms yeah. off the source to save the people, you know? Like, yeah, it's very, very fun. Uh, I dig it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so so go ahead and drop a scene in there. That's exciting. This is exciting. This is a good one. Mm. I love I love the idea as well of, uh, of the, the bucket full lineage having this, like, I think it was like really tied to like the discovery of magic and then you know generations later ultimately ends with the like the giving up of it uh for this for this culture for this uh for this people it's really interesting it is yeah. it's quite yeah um okay dope so we have now this new event of the battle of broken glass and uh the scene which follows the last stand of bucket fall uh the the handing over of um what what did we call their pool the inkwell of course the inkwell yeah 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 cool So yeah, I guess Grace, you'll be going next. Yeah, sorry, I'm no, taking. No, you're yeah. fine, man. It takes a second. I can't. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna put an event in. Um, magic is discovered yeah. before the discovery of magic leads to the awakening of the armor. And what it's going to be is as an event. Um, along, with, I think this is a separate source than the inkwell that we've been referring to as the inkwell, but I think it's a very similar, it's the same, it's the same magic. It's mm. like, you know, this like pool of magic. And I think the event is an individual that we'll just call the yeah. painter. Who paints a scene yeah. in which it's a very large scene, but in which there is somebody who looks like the shepherd. There are trees um, that come to life. And this is in some other part of the world that when 
the painting is finished. The shepherd is finding their magic has awakened. The trees come to life, etc. So, like something prophetic—is um, that sort of what you're what you're driving at? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're using magic. They're using magic ink on a on a wall. Using magic, like you know, I feel I feel like it's like very similar to like what Pierre invent. Like Pierre figures out how to like take mm-hmm. it and, and use it. it. I think in my head this is like um, it's like in my head putting the painting it on the wall is what imbues the the folks that we like. I was I'm try, I was trying to think earlier of like we know that the magic that like burns the queen. We know that like Pierre's formula like. A lot of this stuff is like they take that inkwell, but like to me, it's like what happened at the beginning to like create this. Like, where did the other? Where did this other stuff? How did this other stuff happen? Um, it could be just proph- prophetic. It could just be the painter painting that scene, knowing what's happening. But something in my head is like it was actually it's kind of cool. That's like it yeah, it was the actual trigger. But yeah, so somewhere in the world exists like a like a cave with like paintings in it. In my head, that's also how the orcs uh, um, gain the magic. Get there, yeah. like when it's when it's woken, it's, when it's woken up inside of them. Yeah. When it was in- it's like somebody else yeah. entering and being like, "Oh, interesting!" Like you know, yeah. I love it. This is cool stuff. Okay, <laughs> so is that oh. you there, Grace? Okay, I got it. So. I'm pretty sure I know exactly where I want to go. I think after Gorgo marries Ember name. I'm sorry, Neem. Uh, <laughs> Nagum. <laughs> Nagum. Tried to say that. Uh, um, I think that there is a new period. I think their descendant one of their descendants um who is an explorer someone who has um abandoned both the orcs and the order of ignis to travel the world I'm just trying to like clarify where I'm going here. Okay. I think that um they I think that it's this this period occurs after the death of Gorgo, the rise of the orcs. This is likely uh his granddaughter named uh Ignicia. Um, the granddaughter of Gorgo. She effectively finds high on the mountains uh, a great series of these crystalline structures that I think that she's trying to like understand because she believes them to be a source. But in fact, she's wrong. That like what she's discovering up there are uh, the remnants of like some great entity or perhaps the beginning of some great entity. But what it is, uh, is, is the birth of the first dragon, right? I think that in her exploration of uh, the crystalline peaks of... Uh, the Doom Spire Mountains. She stumbles on what she thinks is a source, but in fact um, is the first dragon that has kind of uh, been nurturing for who knows how long, and that her like exploration in this place turns it loose. And I think that like the dragon, uh, as it like 
journeys across the world, like in the same way that the shepherd kind of changed the world as he went, uh, the flight of the first dragon over Andromeda, like heralds uh, the very beginning of the end, you know, uh, the end of the beginning or whatever it is, wherein like as a shadow like passes over these communities, these these once forests, these broken kingdoms, it sees like beneath it from the skies a world breaking, a world like, you know, falling apart, uh, a civilization uh, disseminating across the world. And I think that... um I think that it in of itself is a source. It's a living, moving entity that like uh, acts as a source of magic to the world. And I think it heralds like an age of great mutation. There are people that are literally like transformed, their flesh changed uh, for better, or for worse, uh, made uh, more beautiful or grotesque, stronger and weaker. The sick become healthy, uh, uh, the healthy fall and firm. And um, yeah, this is uh, the first flight or the flight of the first dragon across Andromeda. Yeah. Uh, that's me. Cool. Does the dragon have a name, out of curiosity? Yes. <laughs> I think that, uh, it takes the name Ignacia, uh, and so I think that it's, like, this great thing of mystery and myth and, like, I... I... Cool. Ignacia goes up into the mountains, right? Into like the Doom Spire Mountains and like amidst these kind of crystalline mountain peaks. Uh she's never heard from again, but after her journey there, the dragon flies and like the dragon is called Ignacia and nobody really knows like the veracity of any of that. But yeah. Maybe we'll find out. Okay. Okay. That's cool. That's big stuff. Mm -hmm. I love it. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. To you, Taylor, I think. Um, where is this event for this period? I am putting it right after the orcs led by Gorgo and before the fractured okay. people. I'm still just adding gotcha. it in here. So it's a period it's a rather period, than an okay. event. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, yeah, yeah. Yep. Gotcha. Gotcha. Cool. So, gosh. Yeah, I kind of just want to, like, jump right off of that. Um, yeah. I'm going to call it the age of metamorphosis, not mutation, because that's a sort of unpleasant word. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and I don't mean bit. it that way. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I think. I think it's actually a, a light event, though. Or, I'm sorry, uh, period. Where did I go? I lost it. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think that in like like an event happens like as this like world is changing, I think I think that all of these like fonts of magic are broken. And I think they, like, suddenly empty. Like, just being, like, absorbed into, like, the earth itself. And there's no longer, or at least nobody knows where there is, if there is, if there is even one that exists anymore. That all of these pools have just emptied. The ink has run dry. 
I love it. The the like wells are dry. The ink well is dried up. Uh, very interesting. And where is this going? This is an event under the period under that I just the, created. Yes. The fight of the first dragon uh, begins this change or heralds yeah. in this change. Okay, fascinating. Yeah. Okay. Ink well runs dry. The pools. I don't think there's like a loss of magic or even like those that have that are have like magic inherent are like feel like a surge as like this like these fonts are like absorbed into like the world. Yeah. Very cool. I love it. All right. Okay. Does that bring it to me? Yes, sir. All right. So I was actually circulating something that was sort of very similar to what Tyler ended up doing. I was going to poison a well, but uh, I'm not going to do that anymore um, because we've, we've already kind of wiped the the board free from these, these wells of magic. What I'm going to do is actually go back and canonize something that we kind of talked about before. Um, I'm going to go back to our period of magic discovery in the first place and the rise of the shepherd. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to add an event at the end of that period, which is the death of the first shepherd uh, and the passing of the, uh, of the title to their heir. Um, and I think what I'm, what I want to sort of clarify with this is that it happens young uh so the the shepherd does not live long in the scheme of things relative to their their people their race and so it needs to be passed on quickly um which sort of expedites all of this panic about magic being is it short-lived is it you know does it impact the life but yeah so the death of the first shepherd um is what i'm gonna want to drop here yeah i yeah. dig it I'm gonna call. Yeah, when you said that thing earlier about like maybe it burns mm -hmm. through them, like geez, yeah. that's good. Yeah. I'm gonna call uh, the the sort of passing on of the the magic or the title as the herding. Uh, yeah. So you herd it forward to the next uh, to the next shepherd. Yeah, and that's all. Oh going to be a light thing because i think it's this 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 prospect at this time of like oh it's you know it's sad because we're losing the first shepherd but we're gaining a new one so it's kind of there's still like this optimism of, of magic and discovery so i'm still going to color it as light at this point uh yeah uh, and actually i'm gonna i'm gonna add one more one more little detail there mm -hmm. the second shepherd is will veers <sighs> Nice. Yeah. Hell nice. yeah. I really love that. So great. Yep. Yeah, I really dig that. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Nice. I dig that, Austin. Um I heard I heard <laughs> the hurting. Oh, the hurting <laughs> race. It hurts to do it. It's the, the hurting, hurting race. <laughs> that makes way more sense. But also it hurts. Um, <laughs> that, that brings us full around back to Tommy. The lens, you get to close out your round, my friend. All right. I have something I've been playing for. I've been trying to figure out how to figure out this first, what the Clemens, what the Shepherd discovered and all that stuff. So that's what I'm diving into. Uh, I think it's after the painter does, I'm assuming the painter did like the cave walls. That was many years before this, or maybe like, you know, a couple years before this, but the, I've seen like the Shepherd was sent out by, uh, by Lady Winifred many years ago. Uh, to to plus many other people to uh, find something because they needed something in need, right? They were in need, they needed something. And what I'm picturing this event is, yeah, the discovery of... Uh, what I'm picturing is uh, what 
Rich just described the, the the mountain. He he finds that mountain without realizing what it is yet. And I think what I'm imagining is he is thirsty and he hears a voice. And he hears a voice that is the dragon, but he doesn't realize this yet, who's been just sitting inside this mountain. And it tells him to come and, and he unburies a little bit of the water uh, or whatever, you know, the, I'm just picturing his water because he's been talking about the inkwell and yeah, the yeah, yeah. pool. The pool is like the bigger source that is found later, but this is just a little bit that streams out of the mountain after he, he like picks at it, streams out, hits him. He gets that magic power and he's able to take it out of him and put it into the next shepherd. The hurting, he's able to take it and channel it into the next shepherd. Oh, nice. And then it's spread out into the grass and that's how the trees came alive as well because the water went into the soil, bringing to life the trees um, through that. It was just a small taste of the magic that the inkwell ended up being later on. Fuck yeah. Yeah, I dig yep. it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, this is pretty fun, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love when somebody does something that, like, like Oz, you doing that. I was like, oh, I'm already thinking this is great. I can, like, turn yeah, the hurting dude. into it. There have been a Synergy. bunch of these. Yeah. Synergy. Yes, exactly. <laughs> there have been a bunch of these moments where you guys have thought of a couple of things, and I'm like, oh, my God, that's brilliant. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm calling it the pigment, even though it's not the – just so for yeah, we yeah, know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I dig it for sure. Like the raw pigment, right? Or whatever, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he'll drink some raw pigment from the mountain, sending some pigment into the ground, which creates the arbor. And, yeah, I think that's basically the event. This is how the shepherd and the arbor become magic? Yes. And, like, the shepherd, like, that's... That's why the shepherd is this title because the Cleons only have this one source, as opposed to the the Xanophis have the actual inkwell source. The the the, the full any like multiple people can do it, uh, as opposed to I feel like with his it's like it's just this one. The it's inside the source is inside him almost. And so it's like passed forward almost. Yeah. Yep. Cool. interesting i'm really i'm really intrigued by the implication there for the arbor and like were they were they actually sleeping and this awoke them or were they created yeah. by this this magic and so even though they might feel young or old that's just how long and the tree's like, been what growing, is this magic no like created of is it like you know these like consciousness like coming like and inhabiting things like well i have this like fascinating notion of like the one two here where the painter finishes the scenery on the cave wall like deep in the bowels of like the world where the second source is where this other inkwell exists right meanwhile like within the same kind of span of time uh the first shepherd like drinks the pigment from the mountain like some spills into the ground right and so like i'm very much perceiving it in this very literal like the water leaking into the ground from the shepherd is almost like the shock paddles right but that that like the painter is almost like painting the dream of life into these things you know what i mean uh. like they were alive because like the painter like made them alive but that like the raw pigment like kind of like pa you know um i don't know yeah, yeah this is all very cool yeah 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 hmm um, okay, dope. Uh, so is that it, Tommy? Are you good there? Is that the end? I think that's it. Okay, yeah, cool, think, cool, cool. I think that's where I'm at. Um, Austin, do you have a moment here if you want to shove a legacy in? Uh, again, uh, you could create an event or dictate a scene if there's anything particularly standing out here you want to focus on. Oh, boy. Uh, I forgot I got to do this. Yeah. Um, I should not chew hard candy into the microphone on stream. <laughs> this is not an ASMR stream. We, like, is that? We only chew pumpernickel. Around yeah, the really. <laughs> I think that ghost won't leave my house. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna add a legacy mm -hmm. here, um, which is uh, the 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 dragon Ignatia. Oh, nice. 
Uh, and I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna swing big here. Do it. I'm gonna drop an event associated with Ignacia in that period of the flight of the first dragon before the event of the inkwell running dry. And that's because the dragon is slain. Oh, the flight yeah. of the first dragon ends with the death of the first dragon yes. and then the ink wells dry up. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yep, yep, yep. Oh my goodness. Uh, I think the the dragon is uh, is slain uh, by a uh, by one of like the few remaining sort of warriors of Clemens uh, who goes by the name Farron Quell and they were the one to to fell the dragon Ignacia mm -hmm. uh, in this like you know for whatever reason uh, but that's what triggers or at least seems to lead to the Inkwell running dry at least at present amazing okay cool okay. Awesome. cool um Grace, it's your turn. You want to go? Um, we should we should finish a full round, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah sure. Everyone's yeah, good we with that. We should all have uh... a chance at the lens for sure. Yeah. Okay, I think I'll just put my focus pretty generic. Well, let's just say culture. Mm -hmm. That's solid. Um, pretty generic. Um, the event I'll start off with. When is the there's so much going on. I know. Now. Uh, this thing has gotten really <laughs> exciting. We filled this sucker out in five hours. So, I definitely want this to be after the monarch, uh, Winifred, is killed. Um, you had said when you said before Winifred is the one who like sends people out to go drink from the. Like sends the shepherd and the shepherd drinks from the. It's like the same person. I, well, we said talk, that, I said that, but I know we talked about like that's many years later. It, it could be a different person. I always pictured in my head that Lady Winifred was like the first mon the, the monarch we see at the beginning who sends out the shepherd and many others to go find something and like just lives this very long living. <laughs> I'm totally cool with yeah. that. Yeah. Okay, let's put this one in. Uh, let's say after the marriage of Gorgo and Ember Neem, um, uh, we get the first ever monarch who can use magic. Ooh. So no other monarch has been able to use magic before, but this one displays an ability to do that. Who are they the um, monarch of? Their name? They're the monarch of uh is this like a new kingdom with these two united or or yeah, who are they the monarch of? No, no. So this is I think this is the this is the chemists okay. trying to like this isn't them like trying to reestablish power. Like I don't think that they know they can do this, but I do think have we had anything where the chemists are they're not destroyed yet at this point, right? No, no, they're they're just, no. no this whole Yeah, there's just an orc yeah. uprising. And, you know, sort of a fragmenting of the Clemens, you know, the Clemens split off into Xanthopus, then the orcs have kind of split off, and then down the line we'll have Broadbow break off. But presumably there still could be Clemens. They're on the downswing, but yeah, they're I mean, still yeah, hanging down in there. Yeah, 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 true. Okay, so let's have um, King, uh, let's see, um, Herrick? Is his name? Uh, <laughs> is the first monarch to, uh, let's say publicly, use magic, because other monarchs could have been yeah, using magic. That's a great note. Um, and I think that he uses this um, uh, sort of like to drum up some maybe intimidation. Yeah. Uh, um, let's say King Aaron, the first monarch to publicly use magic he uses to try and intimidate his vassals from becoming independent. I'm gonna say that's dark. It's very like dark energy, mm -hmm. evil stuff. Yeah, feels very dark. dark magic stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. I don't think it works. 
as the Kemens will eventually be fractured. Um, yeah. Um, that's. I, I don't think I'm going to do a scene. Okay. There, You're so. contented. Yeah. Uh, then what? Yeah. It goes to me. Mm-hmm. Oh boy. <laughs> Gosh, so there's two big things that I'm really kind of interested in. As we're looking at her bookends, they're kind of empty. I'm really curious about Falks with Isle. I'm going to go to the end, the seeding of the nation of Broadbow, mm. Broadbow. And I'm going to create a scene right here. No, I'm changing my mind. I'm pivoting. I'm sorry. There's two big things that are like really exciting to me. Yeah. Pivot. Pivot. I am adding in an event before the dragon Ignatia is slain by Farron Quell. The reason that the dragon Ignatia is able to be slain by Farron Quell. Uh, is because she shatters the metropolis. Uh, her first flight across the realms from like the Doomspire Mountains is to the metropolis, um, where like she arrives and like ravages the city, uh, like stone from stone, rends the earth, leaving nothing but like a scorch turned over pile of soil, uh, driving like the fractured remnants of um, the others like out to to the four winds, right and. This is like uh, why Farron Quell like stands amidst the ruins and uh, is able to like battle her or or maybe not. But like he's there because like this is where he would be. And um, she arrives there and like obliterates this great metropolis only to be lain low by he. Amazing. That's cool. <laughs> great. That's great. Yeah. I love that. Do we have a name for the Metropolis? Yeah. No, I had just been calling it the Metropolis. Uh, we could, like, name it now, though, like, in a sense, like, I'm very weird sometimes, and I like the idea that, like, maybe they just called it Metropolis. But uh, that's very Superman, you know? Uh, we, yeah. we don't. <laughs> um, we don't. Is it like, uh, hmm. I think it's called the Garden, because it was, like, the gathering yeah. of the seeds with the yeah, shepherd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. 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 Yep. Yep. So interesting. No, no, go ahead. Talk to myself now. Oh, no problem. Uh, that's me. That's all <laughs> I really got there. That's my turn, which is going to bring it down to you, Taylor, next. I'm just writing for a second. Yeah. Um. So I think I've got to follow. I'm like so interested in like this thing that I've created of like Marathil like pursuing the Arvor and the Shepherd. Um, and I think like yeah, at the very end like I think that like Marathil does find them, but it's like the Shepherd and uh, like uh, just a handful of Arvor like. Including, like, uh, what was it, Brit, uh, what was, what was I don't know, we got a lot of names now. Uh, Bitterberry, Bitterberry. Yeah, and I think it's, like, it's, like, Bitterberry, it's, like, the ones that, like, escaped. And, uh, yeah, like, I think that she, like, becomes this, like, kind of, like, incredibly powerful, like, almost, like, uh, as she's like traveled and researched, started with the Clemens and like this inherent magic, and then was pulled into and like fascinated by the Zan uh, Top. I know I'm not gonna be able to pronounce Xanthophis. anything. Xanthophis. Uh, yeah, Xanthophis. <laughs> I apologize. Um, no, it's great. <laughs> oh no, no, no! It's one. I love it. I love it. Um, uh, yeah, I think that, like, she finds these, like, this, like, these Arvor, who she's probably, like, not encountered very often, um, and learns from them, and, like, has kind of become this, like, powerful, like, archmage of some sort. 
And, the, and I think that she like leads them and like tries to build like this united like you know this you know the shepherd is like become a part of like these arvor like you know prisoner like turned friends oh nice yeah Stockholm syndrome <laughs> and uh yeah I think she like leads them at the end of this into their own like you know na- this like nation of their own with like this handful of arvor the shepherd herself and like you know whatever stragglers have uh, come on that journey or find them. Um, yeah. How do I write this? Out? I don't know. Um, yeah. Um, so, but the notion is that um, she like, she becomes like a powerful archmage thing with them and they like develop their own like small kind of civilization. This is like the birth of something yeah, new. Like they're this. Yeah. I think that this is like she tries to lead them with all of like this, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, I think that that she's probably like in rough shape after this, like the fall of the dragon, the surge of magic. I think she's like trying to like do something in her like last and final days. Marathil. Develops isn't the right word. Marithil, Cultivates. Like, yes, thank you. That's the word I was looking for. Cultivates. No sweat, Gardner. <laughs> <laughs> really? I'm like brain dead. Um, Marithil cultivates a new nation of Arvor. New nation with the remaining Arvor surviving Arvor. Uh, where is this period? This is this like right after she's pursuing research? I'm no, I'm putting it like it's in the okay, end. That's what like I it's at the very end. It's taken her a long time to find them to like develop these relationships to do the research. Um, yeah, at her at her heart, like she's always like this like kind of scientist like mind. The cultivation nation, Arvor, and the shepherd. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. So she lives a long time, huh? Okay. Potentially. Boom. Okay. Yeah. She like leads them back, like, and uh Yeah. Okay. Cool. Who knows what happens from there, I guess. Okay. Uh <laughs> I guess Austin, that's you. Oh no! My bad. Uh, I guess that's you, Austin. (laughs) So, I have something that is a maybe a little bit of a stretch, but I want to I want to put on the on the table Uh, in the period of our fractured people moving in different directions. Mm -hmm. We have a uh, a xanthan cult, you know, a a xanthan cult that has been brewing and developing. They call themselves the Flickering Hem. And they claim to have resurrected the martyr Clara Viridian. Oh. And they, cult. you know, cult. and, uh, you know, cult, their, cult, cult. Their, their calling card, may the well never dry, may the color never fade. Oh, yes. There is this growing cult yeah. uh, that is purporting to have accomplished something that no one else has been able to do, which was like Austin, you put the cult in you <laughs> sure <laughs> yes. if I've ever yeah. you. Oh Amazing. I love it, man. That's incredible. Oh my goodness. Yes. <laughs> that's great. The flickering yeah. hem? Oh, that's so great. Oh, that's oh, that's good. Right? With the, the dress on fire. Yep. I dig it. I dig it. That's so good. Um, I'm down with a cult that's like full of a bunch of culty nonsense. That's fantastic. Uh, okay. Cool. And and no claim doesn't yeah. mean they have to. We had we had no. 
Spawn resurrection. Well, so magic, we, but at we, least at the end of our story, there is a claim that maybe this thing has been broken. We, uh, as the creators, like, uh, you know, we know, like, what the laws are. But, yeah, like, what these people believe is something altogether different. Sick. Austin, that's you. That, uh... Br- Where is Clara? No, you can't yeah, meet yeah, her. She lives yeah. up in Canada. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. You can't. <laughs> uh, she, she, she's got a meeting. She's got a meeting. Uh, th- yeah, she's... This brings yeah, us busy. back around to you, Tommy. Yeah. <laughs> Last pass for tonight, my friend. All right. Uh, do, do, do. So, wait, Austin, where where is that? Where did that go? The the cult. That's in our last period. So I've kind of dropped uh, between the seceding and and Marathil, uh leaving this new nation. Cool. Um, but it so didn't really I, kind of fit anywhere in that space. Yeah. No, I'm just trying to read it before because I, I'm. I'm same brain as you again, Austin. I, I was also <laughs> thinking of of that area of the. I was gonna focus in on the broken glass and potentially maybe the cult uh, formed from those the rem, poor broken glass. They can't catch a <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> So my event is basically after after all that, and the cult branches out the broken glass. Not just a few. They're wandering, looking for a new home, and I I think how their journey would end uh, there is. I think they they end up near the shores and they look out at this island and this island is abandoned now, but they see fragments of old buildings that are destroyed. And this island we know as Foxwith, but they rename the last masterpiece as they all uh, stay there looking for salvation. Or just to just to be left alone for a little bit, probably. Yeah, really. <laughs> they just want a day of vacation. Oh, awesome. I love it. Uh, Fox with rediscovered at the end. I love that. I really like wanted that yeah. echo. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's great. I was gonna like. I was like, somebody has to go there. If it's like geographically isolated, mm-hmm. it's hard to get to. I couldn't figure out who should be there, but the like, I really they're trying their yeah. best. <laughs> yeah, but I was like tempted to like good. raise a thing up there and like do a scene, uh, but I also was like, nah, the dragon has to destroy the metropolis. Like that's where like the great battle goes down after the city is raised, and like yeah, 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 yeah. And that's where a lot of these people get changed, right? Yeah, I think anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Um, you guys are really good with the names. I love this stuff. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I dig it. I really dig that, Tommy. Okay. Cool. The last masterpiece we called it. Yeah, it's their like it's yeah. this island. The last masterpiece. The last thing they have. I mean, I never established where the painter's oh. thing was. Oh. True. Was where the shepherd was. Fortune. I love <laughs> my favorite thing is like bringing things up, like bringing things up that happened. Like mm-hmm. that's so fun. So, uh, mm-hmm. Yes. Fortunately <laughs> for you, Grace, you have the final word of the evening when it comes to leaving mm. your mark on this history. No, a, a legacy True. for Tommy, but um, uh, I feel like I was looking at this thing, and I feel like we should just put something light in the race of innovation. It's a light. Period. And everything in retrospect, it probably should be dark. Yeah. Uh, no, it's just arm choice. But I wonder if. Uh, yes. No, but I think that like um, that's the joke. Is like it is like light. It's like oh, like new discoveries, yeah. new discoveries. But then the things that start happening within bad, all these bad. new discoveries are like bad. Yeah. Bad. Um. Hmm. Um. Hmm. Um. We could put an event in there. We could just have somebody. What could they do? They could make something nice, right? Like this is the era of innovation. Um. The kids. The kids. Uh, what could they make? Uh. This great. Uh, I don't know. Um, hmm. I don't know. I don't know where to put anything. Um, it's a lot of stuff in here. There is. Is 
All right, nope. I feel like, um, you're okay. It's really uh, it's tough as the stuff starts to fill out, and we got to figure out where we want to go. Uh, well, we could just we could just build on the or in the first period, I'll even it out, and um, I think before the Clemens reach their agreement with. The Fox with Isles, they. What do they do? Um, uh, something with the orcs, maybe. Um, have we established. A, oh, I, I, yeah, I know, I know. The, maybe the Clemens conquer uh, the territory uh, surrounding. Do we name the mountain? Do we name where the where dragon the, was? The Doom Spires. Yeah. Yeah, Can the Doom name Spire that? Mountains. Well, that's where the yeah. orcs are from. Uh, conquer the territory starting the Doom Spires. And uh, basically, like, evacuate them. They don't live there. Imagine they had been there. Well, the, uh, well, the magic was there. That's, like, Which wild. That, that? So the orcs almost, like, would have inherited the magic if these idiots didn't, like, migrate them out of here. The Clemens are just Move a bunch of, 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 like, yeah. D-bags who ruined everything for everybody. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Wow. Yeah, that's yeah. really that's just right. awful. Oh, right. gosh. Um, that's it? Okay. That's it. Uh, yeah. Tommy, you could have last licks if you have a legacy that you want to, like, plug in. If you have one final word you want to add, you want to create, like, a scene or an event that's, like, a parting, uh, your parting note. Oh, man. Um, do, do, do. You know, you could pick. I want one. You could pick any uh, place. You could pick the like the kingdom of broken glass. You could pick whatever you want as your legacy, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think like let me just keep with my boys the broken glass. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think like this is like like almost like the epilogue, right? Like I think at a certain point, like we just see that like there, like we see uh them rebuilding you know it's almost like mm-hmm. a montage is an event of of them taking over the last masterpiece and and and, and maybe this is a scene maybe, maybe more this is a scene off of uh which i can't find out but the the broken glass uh the founding of the last masterpiece i think it would be a scene off that of like yeah just a montage of rebuilding uh new structures being formed and and the broken uh broken glass people just repopulating and, and creating this aisle as a new home for them. Sick. I love it. The final scene of like, uh, the, the few remaining members of the kingdom of broken glass, like beginning the work on the last masterpiece, uh, as they like take refuge, uh, and our timeline fades out to black. This is pretty dope. You guys, yeah. should we like run down through the whole thing? Do we do the rundown? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's all do right. It. Absolutely. So, a rising civilization called the Clemens expands itself to the limits, finding itself in need. Uh, the Clemens conquer the territory surrounding the Doomspire Mountains and evacuate the orcs. They're finally able to broker an agreement to control the Falks with Isle on the same day that the Shepherd is born. Into the second period where magic is discovered, an icon of epic legend called the Shepherd changes the face of the world to Andromeda as he walks across it. Meanwhile, the painter finishes their scene on a cave wall, which includes imagery of the Shepherd, the Arvor, the Orcs, all of it. Um, the Shepherd drinks raw pigment from the doom spire mountain sending some loose into the ground inciting the awakening of the arvor a race of sentient trees and allowing the ability to pass the magic forward uh the arvor as they awaken call a great conchalation in the lyris wood forests um Broadbow flees to the south, bright bark heads to the garden, bitterberry endures waiting behind in the Lyris wood. Wilveers, who will become the shepherd someday, takes Longleaf and bright bark back uh, to the garden, the great metropolis of the shepherds, right? Uh, meanwhile, the gathering of the seeds of the future occur as the shepherd arrives in the garden with a flock behind him. The seeds of the future are sown in the metropolis. Uh, the death of the first shepherd occurs and the herding of their heir, Will Veers, 
is passed forth after uh, the pigment is taken. Meanwhile, the next period, another civilization, an offshoot of the Clemens uprises. They discover and embrace their own type of magic, which they refer to as the pigment. It's held in an inkwell, a seemingly never-ending pool, while researchers begin to gather around it, around it to define its properties, uses, and to determine... <coughs> Who gets access? Meanwhile, the inventor, Pierre Bucketfall, creates smaller liquid forms of the pigment as he masters his formulas, allowing the pigment to be used by many others. Um, the tide of fire occurs as the Order of Ignis, the civilization around the, the Lake of Liquid Stone, demand a uh, trade with the Xanthophis and they begin their trade relationship. Uh, the race of innovation begins in the next period uh, as both the Sanso Xanthophis and the Clemens are trying to find progress with the magic that they have ultimately to develop a power source. The monarch of Clemens is assassinated. Xanthophis is implicated, despite the fact that they were not actually behind it, but rather the shepherd and the research assistant, Merithil, conspired to see this deed done. Uh, afterwards, Clemens pursues dark magic, causing the Arvor to start sending some of their work and research and people to the Xanthophis as a response. Uh, realizing the Clemens have lost their foot hold in the race of progress they destroy an enormous number of the arvor using the dark magic to prevent the xanthophis from advancing further than them meanwhile the remaining arvor begin to abandon uh, all known civilizations after the fall of many it's the beginning of the last autumn the few arvor who remain with the clemens are hewn down uh and held to be uh, uh taken for their power as orc communities begin to find themselves able to use magic for the first time uh the arvor left flee taking the first shepherd with them uh marathil after pursuing research with the xanthophis having killed the leader um of the clemens abandons Xanthophis and goes in search of the Arvor and the shepherd who they took with them. Uh, Gorgo rises up in front of the orcs and he begins with their newfound access to magic to, to start a revolution. Uh, the first great battle of which is the Battle of Broken Glass as the remnants of Xanthophis defend the inkwell against Gorgo and his Gorgons. Uh, a descendant of Bucketfell manages to give himself up to, less, to let the rest of Xanthophis escape alive. What happened to the Xanthophis? Uh, Gorgel battled for control. Bucketfell uh, handed over the source and his own knowledge in exchange for their lives. Uh, Gorgo goes on to marry Ember Neem of the Order of Ignis, a marriage uh, set for convenience and politics, but one which burgeons into love with time. Um, Kin Herrick is the first monarch to publicly use magic shortly after this marriage. He uses this to try to intimidate his vassals from independence, uh, consolidating the power of the Clemens if he could. Meanwhile, uh, the next period is the flight of the first dragon across Andromeda. Uh, the granddaughter of Gorgo, Ignatia, travels to the Doomspire Mountains and amidst the crystalline peaks she is not seen again, but a dragon emerges flying across the world and heralding the age of metamorphosis, wherein people begin to be changed physically in profound ways. Um, the dragon Ignatia, at the end of its flight, shatters the metropolis called garden rending it stone from stone turning it over till naught is left but one soldier a clemen named farron quell stands and destroys her the first dragon's flight is its last at which point the inkwell runs dry all of the pools of the source are found to be emptied and there's a surge of magic that's felt across andromeda as the earth itself draws the magic back into it uh 
of fractured people find themselves moving in separate directions. The seceding of the nation of Broadbow, the Arvor who long since fled to the coast in the south, leaving a herald behind. The rise of the flickering helm, a Xanthan cult claiming to have resurrected the martyr Clara Viridian. May their color never fade. Meanwhile, Merithil, having spent many years in isolation, emerges a powerful archmage cultivating a new nation with the surviving Arvor and the descendant of the shepherd whom she has finally tracked. Falks with Isle, abandoned, is rediscovered by the last survivors of the members of the Broken Glass Kingdom, and they rename it the Masterpiece. And the last scene we see of this tale is the remnants of the Broken Glass Kingdom rebuilding and beginning to create their new home in this ancient place. That's the tale. That is the story of how the world of Andromeda discovers magic and their civilizations give way before it. I would I watch the say, show that's based on the tonight. Like, was... Dope. Oh my goodness. It's pretty cool. Like that's just all the stuff that like is established before episode one of the yeah. TV show you're watching. Yeah. Right? Like the book, but like the stuff that's oh, like Lord. the reason why the map on the on the front of the book like makes sense, yeah. right? Like that's what this is. It's so um, fun. Oh, it's so good. So I, I I joked all the time. I remember when you and I were planning yep. uh, a play by post, a D and D play by post in the Discord, and we talked about the scene where the professor like gets drunk and he's like figuring out like he he doesn't know where the like the last um like stone that's like mm-hmm. powering the city is, and then he like figures it out, and we just like played through like basically like played through the scene. I'm like, ah, that was fun. Nobody's ever gonna see that. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, and that's kind of the fun of this game is like, yeah, yeah if you think about like this is setting up something else or whatever you yeah. get to play through all that stuff it's so fun and it's so oh, my mind's running wild yeah especially um, with this like transformation stuff like uh gosh i'm like just just there's so much i'm like uh i would just want to see what marathon does like <laughs> yeah. oh my god lucky or like fell in we love with her another round Oh yeah, Marisol's oh. gotta be old. I was I was thinking well, you were gonna you were you were gonna have her be. I, I feel like you were setting her up to be like whatever we're playing. <laughs> <laughs> like, Sorry, yeah. I could have to start a yeah. Zark mage. Yeah, you're setting up. My bad. Yeah, yeah that's Sorry, weird. I yeah, just, you know, <laughs> I gotta start. But it's right because she she leaves in the last autumn. She leaves to go find the Arbor and the Shepherd. Yeah. But then after that, Gorgo and Neem get married, and then their granddaughter. <laughs> Goes to the doom, the oh, doom yeah. spire. Like, so yeah. Marathil is big, big arch druid energy. There. There. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Who saw that coming? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> yeah. Oh. No, yeah. I, I I needed that. But it, that it was awesome. It's so cool. Like even just sort of looking at like this, you know, particularly like this last period where we're kind of looking at all these like fractured nations. Like we've got, you know, presumably some like fractured aspect of of Clemens, uh, you know, in the remnants of the garden. We've got the Gorgons and their alliance with Ignis. You know, we've got this tiny little group of the broken glass that have like squirreled themselves away after so much trauma. <laughs> yeah. You've got Marathil and you know, her Arvor nation, uh, you know, Marithil having been responsible for killing the queen, which Clara Viridian kind of took the fall for in some respect. And there's a cult now claiming to have resurrected her. And there's this entire other little nation that we don't really know much about at all of of Broadbow. (laughs) And like Mm -hmm. this tiny, you know, who knows what their deal is. Like there's so many, like, you know, do you know what I think it's cool. That the other, I think the thing at the end there that is really cool is it talks about the inkwell runs dry, the pools are emptied. There's a surge of magic felt across Andromeda as the magic is taken back in the world. I often think of like when you're trying to explain like, Rich, you've been having to do this mm. with like Wheel of Time. I'm like, mm. what is Wheel of Time? Mm. Like, what is it? And you're like, okay, like you give the like two cents spiel. The idea that like at the beginning, even like at the beginning of a D&D campaign, that like if you know how to use magic, you're like the only ones left who know how to mm-hmm. use magic. It's not that like, often the story is like, Oh, people are starting to learn math. If people like no, start, this to, you know, whatever they did it, like whatever yeah. magic is in the. This is it. This is everything else is gone. Like if you kill that wizard, it just means there's less magic in the world. I think it's like really cool. It's a cool idea. Well, yeah. 
A hundred percent. This definitely fired me right up. I'm feeling awesome about what we built here. And this is our first time, you know, I think like, uh, you know, coming back and playing it again, like you could see how like you would come like even sharper right uh because we did it like gosh way back in probably april you know it was like a long time ago um and we ran yeah. two sessions and we built out about this much for dragonfly maybe a little bit even less um and and it's the same kind of thing where we had this notion of like oh the first five explorers that traveled into space and then we get to the end and like some of them are kind of revered as gods and, and like they're, there's all this legacy where they come from, right? Yeah. Um, and it just is a really cool way to set up a campaign world, right? Because like you guys as DMs, we all know the drill where like especially you have a new player session one and one player looks to the other player like, hey, where are you from? And player two looks at the dungeon yeah. master like, where am I from? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, like I don't know. I, it's uh -huh. a thing like I've run into a lot over my many years with the game, and so having this shared sense of like, no, no, we're all super into this because we all built it. Like my stuff is here. My ideas are in the history of this world we're playing in, and like I can play the descendant of Marathil. I can play in Arvor. I can, you know, all the stuff. Right? It's so so cool. Um, so yeah. We will certainly chat about this. Uh, I'll get a little screenshot to like toss in maybe to uh, to the comments and stuff. At least get like a tag on the end of the VOD uh, when I get it up on YouTube. But I got to thank you guys so much for coming and spending five hours with me uh, world building this afternoon. This was a lot of fun. Amazing. Yeah. So fun. Super fun. Yeah. Uh, thank you for having us all. Oh, yeah, it's a treat. We will do yeah. it again. And uh, I want to do it with like some real clear intentions again, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Tommy, where should people be looking for you in the world? Uh, where can they like find you and all that kind of stuff? What do you got going on? Uh, hey, it's me. Uh, I have a Twitter. It's called Tommy's Tidbits. Uh, come, you know. Look at my tweets. I guess they're there. I uh, podcast. I have uh, a podcast called Stark Wars. Uh, that's where we talk all Marvel and Star Wars uh, TV shows, mostly of Disney, because that's like a lot of the Disney stuff right now on the Disney Plus. So we're covering a lot of that stuff over there. I also have a Nes Declassified podcast that will be starting season two momentarily uh, called Declassified Survival Guide, the podcast. And that's uh, me and my friend Jalen. We go through the show uh ned's declassified survivor guide a nickelodeon show from like early 2000s and we go through talk about a lot of our school experiences uh it, you know growing up hell yeah nice uh it's been a treat man we will do it again sooner than later uh this has been like a really fun time uh go check out uh the journey home it's on my youtube you can find it at the post show recaps on the D D D patreon patron feed that was something there's too many words i i don't know i'm very tired uh <laughs> It's an awesome musical based on a sick D and D game created by Tommy and Pia in the chat and Todd the Librarian. Legends both around here in the Philly fam. Uh, it's been a treat, man. We will do it again for sure. Uh, Grace, how about you? You always got good stuff going on. Yeah, yeah. So we got some stuff going on over a post show recap. Succession comes up Monday. This uh, tomorrow is the season wow. finale of succession it's supposed to be pretty big like i guess everybody who got screeners got one through eight and then they kept nine so expecting big things uh from tomorrow night's episode we'll be live right after the well we're going to record right after the episode so it should drop in your feed quickly after that also doing uh movie coverage on post show recaps we recently covered uh, belfast and encanto and the power of the dog on netflix and next week we're coming west side story with melissa who is a, a frequent uh, player on the DM Philly channel. Um, Matrix, we're covering the Matrix over on the Patreon feed um, leading up to the new one that comes out December 22nd, so check those out. Um, I was on the Rob is a Podcast Q&A show for last week's episode uh, of Service, so like this past Monday. Um, that was really fun. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, at, on Twitter, uh, at Hyphen That's all a bunch of good stuff. That's plenty. Go check out Grace's stuff. Follow her on Twitter. Uh, she's always keeping busy, and it's really good stuff. Um, Taylor, how about you? What's going on with you in the world? Anything you want to hype up or point our attention to? Uh, gosh, not really. Uh, that uh, I can think off the top of my head. Um, I'm like here. Yeah, Taylor's here all the, the time. time. <laughs> I got Taylor doing book clubs. I got Taylor playing DD &D games. I got Taylor world building. Taylor is the best. Uh, I'm very fortunate <laughs> to have such a dear friend. Thank you again for this fun ride. 
thank you for taking me along. I'm like, this is the dream, yeah. you know? Uh, you're my bro, bro. Uh, Austin. What about you? Hello. Is there anything in the world that you just want to like point our attention to? Anything we should be listening to? Where can we go find out cool stuff about you? Well, for me, you can find me on Twitter at AustinFSmith8. Uh, and I try to link everything that I do there. Sometimes don't, but I try. Uh, I'm currently writing uh, weekly reviews of uh, Survivor, uh, Survivor 41, as it's charging towards its finale this week. So if you want to see my thoughts on that uh i i write for inside survivor uh weekly articles there uh if you want to see me in more D D space you can either check out the musical that's already been mentioned i uh was one of the, uh, the one of the cast members of the journey home and it was a delight uh to create it was a deeply emotional journey for the actual story but very very fun um to check it out uh, additionally, you can find me right here on DM Philly playing in Humble Your, uh, a D&D game where we play a bunch of wholesome little uh, critters in the woodland going on a you know red wall style adventure uh, looking for lost artifacts of, of a past adventuring party. Uh, it's adorable, wonderful. I play alongside Grace. I think we've got a game coming up next this week. Friday. I believe is, is currently yeah, Friday. I'm so excited. So, uh, yeah. Keep your eyes peeled for that. Otherwise, come play uh, come play D D with us in the PSR Discord. It is wonderful. Yeah. Uh, it is a wonderful community of wonderful people. It's where I met all of these lovely faces, uh, and we are, we're a great crew. And if you like like D and D and TTRPGs, which I'm assuming you are, if you're watching this five hours in, <laughs> then you'll probably enjoy hanging out with us and and playing games. So come check us out. Uh, yeah, can't overstate like what a magnificent found family we have all like come to a post show recaps in this last year, especially. Um, it's been like a true joy and a gift, I think, to like so many of us. Uh, if you guys are here, you probably know who I am. I'm Rich Filiberto. I'm DM Philly. This is like what I do. Uh, you can hire me to run private games. That's cool. I am podcasting about the wheel of time because I really love it. It's very exciting. The series has been great. New series on Amazon Prime. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Uh, I'm doing live podcasts about it. Four post-show recaps. Most of the VODs for those are here. Taylor will be back with me hopefully tomorrow night with a couple of our friends in the crowd here. I see the BB president hanging out. Uh, we are going to be doing the Wheel of Time book club talking spoilers from the book perspective i am podcasting about arcane with the dear adam humphrey my man pia in the chat uh we're going to be covering episodes four five and six for our next episode that is on the patron feed of post show recaps you got to sign up five dollars a month to get at that sweet 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 podcast um other than that i hang out here i stream games tuesday nights 8 p.m we have dragonfly dnd in space uh humble you're on friday and i will say this as 2021 is winding to a close i am looking towards january in 2022 uh to be launching my patreon keep your eyes out for that i'm going to be trying to build a little corner of uh space on the internet where we can play a bunch of indie role-playing games and stuff like microscope and stuff that's not fifth edition D D. because i love fifth edition D D. but there's all these cool games out there you guys and uh this can be a really like fun way to spend an afternoon with good company so uh, please keep your eyes up for that and come join us next month as we roll into the new year. That's it. I just got to thank you guys again. This has been an absolute delight. And um, I'm very grateful to have such an awesome crew to like do stuff like this with. So fun. That's thank you. Fun. Thank you, everyone. This was a blast. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yes. Um, with that, I will say bye. 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 bye.